What's going on, guys? This is not a drill. The Need to Know podcast has been nominated for Best Co-Host Team in the third annual Signal Awards. We're so honored to be nominated alongside some incredible podcasters, and we need your help to take home the win. Click the link at the top of this episode's description and cast your vote for the Need to Know podcast today. It only takes a few seconds and every single vote matters. Hey, you can even do it while you're listening to this week's episode. We appreciate you so much for your continued support of the podcast and hope you enjoy the episode. You see what happens when Reggie's not here? I know. Like, we don't even know how to count. <laughs> We're lost without her. We forget how to count. I forget names. I didn't know what to even wear today. Like... <laughs> She it, helps us with it, everything. It was all bad. <laughs> no, honestly. No coordination without Reggie around. Nope. Reggie, we miss you. Facts. For sure, for sure. What's yeah. going on, y'all? It's the Need to Know Podcast. We are down Reggie, but we do have family in the building, yeah. okay? That goes without saying. For sure. Um, the Stay Busy Podcast. Thank y'all for pulling up. We got Armand and Miss 2Bs pulling up. Mm -hmm. Nobody can ever, ever replace Reggie, but... I figured if I was going to try, I might as well bring in her mans. <laughs> might as well bring in her mans. <laughs> like, fuck it, might as well bring in her mans. Makes right. sense. Like, Makes we, sense. We got Facts. Armand in the building and Miss 2Bs. Uh, like we said, thank y'all for pulling up. Absolutely. If y'all don't know, Armand, he's been on the podcast before. Multiple times. Uh, for sure. December 2019 for I Love This Episode. March 2021 for uh, Stan Man. Hey. And then January 2022 for Better Days Ahead. And the episode about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. Oh, yeah. That one got I me in trouble. The name, I got in trouble for that. You got in trouble for that one. We, so. we all delete that episode out of wow. memory bank. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they, they try to jump me out of that episode. Hectic, but, yes, man. Man. Salute to you for remembering the day, man. Armand has um, great memory. Like if you guys didn't I'm know. pulling yeah. up for ring number five like Kobe, man. Yeah. Is that like a journalist thing? Yes. Is that something? Because Reggie has that too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she we like, we take in a lot of information, but we remember it probably because like with news articles, you gotta like give context to shit after you like yeah. put the main top point in. Mm -hmm. So you just like repetitive the repetition mm -hmm. of it all. So you just remember especially shit, when you so. at the end of the article. Yeah, like, yeah, yep, yeah. You trying to try and... hit that word count. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought I wanted to be a journalist until I met you. <laughs> like, you and Reggie kind of steered me out of that lane. I said, you know what? Let me go produce some shit. <laughs> yeah. like, let me go type some shit up on social media. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? This is not going to work out. You're doing pretty well for yourself, my I brother. appreciate it. I appreciate it, brother. But yeah, we got Armand in the building. Um, just so y'all know, if y'all are unfamiliar, y'all need to get familiar. All right, you can find his work in Billboard, Revolt. Hello. Up Rocks, Hip Hop DX, and currently Vibe Magazine. Mm. He's New Jersey's very own. He will tell you in a heartbeat, all right? <laughs> if you're from Jersey, they take it very serious that you know, I am not from New York. They don't play. I'm not from New York. Yeah. I'm from Jersey. Yeah. Jersey in the building, avid sports fan, especially the WWE. And he is also the founder of the Stay Busy podcast with Armand Salas. So again, thank you, brother, for pulling up. Thanks we for appreciate me. you. Four time five, Pete, whatever you want to do. Yeah, we, got it here. Yeah. we got it here. We got it here. Always a pleasure. Always absolutely. A pleasure. Absolutely. And, and certainly, I won't even say last, and, and, and but not least, because I'm going to go last. We go go last. For sure. Right. It's only right that we bring the 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 the, the vibe. Mm -hmm. The energy, Hello. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Hello. A lot of people might look and say, "Oh, you know, she's soft. She ain't nothing soft about her. Ain't nothing." Not I, I, no. I tap in every single week to this podcast. Same. You get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I need your energy, mm -hmm. as you should. I feel your energy. <laughs> <through> the <laughs> phone, you get what I'm, I'm saying? Honestly, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> we got Miss Two Bs in the building, proudly representing Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's going on? Big How Brooklyn. you doing? I'm good. Uh, Big Flatbush, Brooklyn. what up? Big Flatbush. Uh, you already know. What up? <laughs> and just in, in case people may not know, yeah. program and intern for Angie Martinez, mm -hmm. Big Capricorn in the building, as you all know. Uh, also was a digital producer. She's worked at Viacom, BET, founder and creative director of 2Bs TV, a music-oriented media platform, breaking entertainment news, and building community with millennial and Gen Z pop culture lovers. And she is also a co-host on the Stay Busy podcast. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I will say, one of my favorite voices in podcasting. Oh, you're just that. saying that because I'm here. <laughs> Karen nah. is my witness. That I'm Karen here. is my witness. Yeah. I like strong opinions. Yeah. Okay. You have very. You have strong opinions. Yeah. I'm, I might. Yeah, that's a good you word. Do. Some days. You do. Okay. <laughs> that be strong. You got strong opinions. <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's an honor to have y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank y'all for, for joining. Us. I can't wait. We got a, a, a slate of shit to talk about today. Yeah, for real. A lot. Um, I like to ask all of our guests before they come on the podcast: Is there anything you don't want to talk about right you both said no 
No, it's getting so y'all let me do whatever no, I want to do. Y'all got to make sure Reggie is not here today. <laughs> yeah. So we cannot guarantee that we will be on our best behavior. No, hold listen, bar, I'm man. here, Reggie. No I'm holding here. it down for you, sis. Yeah. I got you. Big, uh, I love that. No holds bar. I got you. Okay. So and if we could cancel, whose fault is it? Uh, we, say we, yeah, <laughs> most likely, but we ain't gonna do that, especially when Reggie's not here. Not With here. that being said, y'all, y'all know what it is. It's the Need to Know podcast. I go by the name Savon S A V O. End. You feel what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta put the pause on the end. And the end uh, today, yeah. it just stands stand for, for neighbors. Neighbor. Okay. okay, I like nah, that. I mean, <laughs> neighbors. We in the we in the neighborhood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. take the end off. You just put the hood. We in the hood with the gang, with the family. You know what I'm saying? It's like your guy, Savon. We in the building, man. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your boy A. As always, the Paco Ramon Poppy. Never alone. I am with a large posse today. I got vibes. I'm just saying something like that. I told you. You just say that because we're here. (laughs) (laughs) Like that. And of course, we always got the man with the plan behind the cam. Oh. My God, P. What's going on, P? Yo, you really? You you a rapper on the last That's one? No, I mean, they not locked in. We got, He's locked in today. We got guests. He all different. Yeah, <laughs> all right. What's up, people? What's up? What's up? Let's get into it. Show. Word. Um, so, I guess before we even get into like all, all the other stuff, right? I do want to find ways to just 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 connect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just sure. connect. Um, I know Armand is well-traveled. And Miss Tubies, I, I do want to get more familiar with you, too. Okay. I know we follow each other on social media. Yes. Um, but I do want to get a little bit more familiar with you. I just came back from a trip. And mm. I, I went to the Dominican Republic. Uh-oh. And like, yo, I almost didn't come back. It looked like you was having fun. <laughs> the first time I've ever been there. Okay. You paid for Pum Pum? No. Oh! Oh, 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 we get it. Oh, this is my Wait, hold on. Because I'm like, oh, I like we that. Right my man it. could never go there. Why not? Like you that. go to Jamaica? I went with Good my question. nigga. Oh, you were uh, and I got flew out by the Jamaican tourist board to cover the event when okay. I was still writing. So right. not too much on me. Right. Right. I was sad. Right. I was on that raft though. But oh. you, I, I know you were with Donny Von with the mud. You got the mud. But it was mud me and my so- ex, <laughs> <laughs> and we massaged uh-huh. each other. I bet. Chill, chill, chill. Not too much on me. But yeah, right. so you didn't buy the pom pom. Nah, never that. I went uh-huh. for the sights and the views and okay. the relaxation. Oh, okay. the, the, the How many sights and views did you see? It was a lot of sights. I bet. A lot of things to see. Anything memorable? Um, yeah, a lot of curves. On the mountains, you know what I'm saying. Right. Like, the, land, and the water, the water. Right. You forgot, Savon. You actually part Dominican, right? I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. 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 i am not 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 i knew i had to be here for this so but yeah, yeah, I've been traveling a good amount lately. I'll be in Atlanta this weekend also. Mm-hmm. So, oh come on, yeah, man, just just a lot happening. But life is good. I'm blessed. I'm For blessed. That's sure. good, man. I'm glad. Yeah. That's what's up. You be you 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 be moving. Yeah. Um. One thing I know about us, our kind of age range and all that Wait, shit how? that goes. Our age. We, we I'm the youngest one here. How you know that? No, I never want to ask birth a woman year, her, her I, age. I'll say my birth year first. Let's uh, see if you older, young. You ready? Yeah. Ninety six. Damn. Yeah, look at you. <laughs> look at you. Look at you. Old in the look at you. you look old. Look at you. Right, so what you were saying? You start looking old in the face. So what you were saying? Yeah. No, there was a time <laughs> when <laughs> I think people in our age range, right? <laughs> Ours, yeah. <laughs> just enjoy Twitter. Yeah. A yeah. little yeah. bit more. Yeah. We was talking about it. It, it feels like a dying place yeah. A yeah. Di- like what what makes y'all feel the way that y'all feel about Twitter y'all had some real strong opinions off air I feel like <laughs> people just don't put their real thoughts out anymore like now that Elon you can make money off of it like niggas just say anything for engagement they may they may not believe it they may not be informed they may not research it they just put anything out to get a reaction out of people the more quotes you get, the more mentions you get, your views go up and you make more bread. So I get it. Like, if that's how you want to hustle, do that. But the app for me in its peak was like 2011 to like 20 up to maybe like even like like, like the pandemic. Like, I felt like really? people oh, yeah, were, they were, were honest on there and you could have real conversations, real discussions. And those get annoying after a while. But now I just feel like. You don't really know if anyone actually believes what they're saying or if they're genuine because everyone just wants to make bread off of it. So, yeah, it sucks now. It sucks. Yeah. For me personally, it's all social media as a whole. Like, 
from influencer culture to just everyone having a platform to state their opinions to just it's just not fun anymore. We're not socializing on mm. there. So it's like, yeah. for me, the most enjoyable time is like around 2009, 2011. Like, I remember oh, one yeah, day. Yeah. I know your age. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> nah, my fault. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she came for yeah, you, girl. You loyal. You loyal. I like that. Yeah, you she good? came for like you. I like that. You loyal. You holding it down for you. Uh, when I'm holding it down, down for you. You're right. You're right. But I'm going to get you. Yeah, yeah. You, you messed with the wrong one. I'm, I'm, I'm not holding it. I can't like, hold it back anyway. Like, so. Godspeed, brother. But there was a day that we were all playing like um, Truth or Tweet. Mm. Okay. And it was oh, just man. like real mm -hmm. young, juvenile, immature, like really just wilding out on there. And I just remember like even hood niggas were still on Twitter. So mm. it was just a good time. Yo, the hood niggas not on Twitter no more. No, yeah. they still on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. They like went back. Them. They went back to Facebook. No, they never left. Yeah, <laughs> because it was Instagram and Facebook at the same time. Yeah. They're Thanks. not taking pictures, so they just mm -hmm. on Facebook yapping. Oh my god, that's crazy. That's when it was the wild, wild west, though. Mm -hmm. yeah, good times. Yeah. Like, like you could tweet at a celebrity. Like, the, 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 I remember my dad got into an argument with like Gabrielle Union in like 2011. <laughs> yeah, what? it was just like insane. About times. what? I don't even I don't remember. <laughs> but, but like, he, but, but like he, he, he tweeted some shit at her. And she responded and like cursed him out. And like he was he was going back and forth with her. I was like, That's what I miss. Yeah. Yes. I, I miss when like celebrities real. would be like, Hey, I'm here. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a Gabrielle Union today, she probably don't even check her Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Probably don't even check Someone her Twitter. probably like uses it for her. Right. Or like <laughs> today you get, hey, I was hacked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they don't be hacked for nothing. They, they yeah. don't be hacked. It's hard to hack some shit today. Is it? Did y'all hear about um <laughs> the FBI can't even get an iPhone? Oh yeah, yeah, Apple don't play with that with they, their security. I, I think they need a, the a FBI can't get like into that. iPhones. Me and what? Apple I mean, doesn't play with their security. Yeah, like even if, if it goes to court, they, they will a, not yeah. open they that phone. They need a subpoena. Shout yeah, out to Apple. That's, that's good. Yeah, like so. Out of home, and, and we don't. <laughs> 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 we don't got to start with the story, but Eric Adams apparently they wanted to go through his phone, mm. and he changed his password to his phone. Thinking mm. ahead. But he forgot the new password. Uh, Allegedly, <laughs> this is the story. Now, because you know how it would be, you have a password for so long, right? right? And then and he's like, you just, damn, I did a new one. What was I thinking at the time? Was I thinking, you right. change it when it get hot. <laughs> 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 I locked myself out of my shit some, when I was uh, with my ex one time. I still Why get you changed it? Because you know it got hot. Uh, Why Eric Adams changed his? They was on him. It was hot. It was hot. <laughs> yeah, like, it was hot. I get it. That, yeah, that yeah, goes yeah. back to say like it's hard to really hack some shit. Right. Mm. The FBI couldn't even get into an iPhone. Like till this day, I think there was a report, report I read that there's an iPhone from 2007 that they're still trying to encrypt and get into, and they still can't. Like the wow. FBI, they just don't have the technology to do it. So yeah, iPhone password is very secure mm. now. That I'm thinking about it, mm -hmm. and I hate to admit this, but I'm going to because it's us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have figured out three passwords in my life going through a woman's phone. You're mm. sick. I figured out one. I figured Whoa, one out. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let y'all. Wait, hold up. I'm not going to let y'all get away with this. I'm, hold on, hold on. What y'all mean figured out? <laughs> or were you, eat, were you watching? No. Nah. So y'all actually just figured yeah. it out with your own brain? It was eight, two, three. <laughs> And, I, and it was the first guess. I was like, you so stupid. Yo, don't you feel good? Yeah. Like, I, was like, I, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> I know you for real. What? This motherfucker has zero, 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 zero. Yeah. zero. Like, we uh, locked in. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> yeah. If you're going to do zero, 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 then. Yeah. 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 You deserve it. That's some bullshit. Yeah. shit. That's stupid. What, what Offset had on his phone? I don't oh. know what Offset had been doing. Listen. Momo. <laughs> 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 the easy joke. Hey, I want to say this real quick. Okay. Sex during pregnancy is healthy. Yeah, of course, right, bro. What no. happened? It is healthy. It's healthy. Do, let me ask you a question. Ask. Do the horniness lead because there's a baby in it? For who? The man? We, we talking from a man? But I, like I've never been a pregnant woman, so I, I, but, no, of either. course not. <laughs> I'll tell you, it, it, it don't leave. It, Pierre, don't you leave. can speak firsthand to this, can you? And I learned. Yeah, so we were at the doctor. I learned that um, the the male's semen or cum, right? actually helps the woman contract once she's uh, pregnant. Hmm. So that's why they say when you're about Wait, to give birth, you're not you supposed to have sex. Know, I didn't know it was the semen that was helping. I thought it was just stretching it out. Nah, the semen helps it. Hmm. Okay. Helps it out. Duly well. noted. Wait, what? <laughs> so have uh, the males, have, have y'all had sex with a pregnant woman before? Not right. that I know of. <laughs> not that you know of. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, it takes just, Alex, how many it. weeks until a woman starts showing? <laughs> oh my fault. <laughs> like, like, oh, my fault. <laughs> I wasn't gonna ask y'all niggas. <laughs> <laughs> You know, them first few weeks, you never know. But in the right? first few weeks, you're definitely not showing. Like, the first two months, yeah. eight yeah. weeks, like, mm-hmm. it's it not showing yet. But has someone told me she was pregnant and I went inside? <laughs> no. <laughs> but would I? <laughs> Maybe. What, I know people who have. Even if it's not your kid. Yeah, for sure. I think that's the biggest thing to, like, the Cardi B Offset story. Yeah. Is that... Apparently, she was fucking somebody while she was pregnant with Offset's kid. Mm. I don't even believe that. Why not? I feel like she's just saying anything to get him mad. I Women agree. do that well. They do it yeah, very well. Like, I do it real well. Like they, if you even accuse exact... me of that shit, mid arguing, I'm like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah, we're going to sit there and just take it like, yeah. <laughs> you did, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> you did, didn't you? Like she you? even said something about takeoff. Like, I don't. I heard that was fake. Thank yeah, God. That, that, that was a fake fake. Yeah, yeah, thank okay. God. Okay. Because okay. I, like, oh, I was just like, hold on, sis. Yeah, you wildin'. Oh, no. <laughs> you wildin'. Yeah, but facts. no, I don't believe that she even did that. I think she was just trying to hit him where it hurts. You could tell when somebody's like, just hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you mm-hmm. could tell both of them, clearly, they, it's hurt. It's pain there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it feels like they both just saying whatever it is to get that hurt off. Even if they are dating other people or moved on, you could mm-hmm. still feel like, I just want to say things because I love you, mm-hmm. but I got to hurt you right now. Yeah. Cardi's like Dominican. Mm-hmm. And not all you niggas. You know, she home with them kids. I'm That's telling you. <laughs> and not all you niggas is hitting that, the baby head. What does that mean? <laughs> Explain. You can't work hmm? the middle because your thing too little. You ever had shrimp scampi before? Wow. I've never ate shrimp work scampi. You've had shrimp scampi before. You've had some linguine. <laughs> yeah, that, that was... Wow. Yeah. I've never heard that listen, before. Listen, we all rap right now. Yeah, there you go. There you go. The nerve of these niggas that think they touching the baby head. <laughs> Yo, let's be they clear. really not though. Niggas is not touching the baby head. They you know how many not. layers before you touch the baby head? How many? Hmm? <laughs> what you say? How many? You asked how many layers. I don't got pussy. <laughs> oh, okay. That's true. A baby ain't ever been in me, so I'll keep y'all posted. When you find out, let us know. Yeah, so I'll keep y'all posted. Okay. Appreciate it. I, I it, hope bro. she never finds out. Okay. Because whoever is the, the father, nah, it's gonna I'll... be my man. Okay. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> it's gonna be my man. All right. Unless he like tragically passes away or something. It still got to give it nine months, no? No. Because, no. like, what if you at odds with the father? You just can't no, I'm please gonna yourself? No, I'm if I'm at odds. It can't just be at odds. What it got to be? What, like, a, is the there even a criteria? Over. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. As a, as a man, as a guy, I can't imagine a scenario where it is okay for my pregnant girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, fiance, <laughs> whatever she is, to have my kid mm-hmm. and go... You know, try another dick. You passed away when she was three months pregnant. Even if I'm dead, you gotta <laughs> hold it down for us another no, I'm six months. No, you, you have to hold it down she for needs another six months. She needs a healthy delivery. She Me? wet. Yeah. <laughs> the wet, doctors bro. literally implore pregnant women to still be sexually active it's, while carrying hey, to help uh, have an easier delivery. I just had a young lady told me she was her wettest when she was pregnant. I my homeboy told me pregnant pussy is lit. <laughs> I can attest to it. <laughs> Wait, um, wait, wait. Wait, personally? I'm yeah. not. How many kids you got? <laughs> oh, I don't I have no kids. Wait, personally? I have, I have no kids. How, how far along was she? Uh, you a head striker? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't even know. He's busting heads. I don't know, but. Come on, you busting head? <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty lit. Well, all right, so let's ask you how many lays did you have to get through? <laughs> I ain't, I ain't touching no baby head. You ain't touching no baby head, right? Like, That's what I'm trying to tell these niggas out there. I'd, I'd like to consider myself, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Fortuitous, but not you know like right. you know I'm 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 not no right. one of them niggas you watch on X videos type, <laughs> type shit, type shit. I'm with but, you. But you know I hear you. I'm with you. Strapped up though. All right. yo, that's yo. my whole thing because I do understand. Hold on, P. If yeah, you don't you get, get, you get. if you going up in there raw and that's not your child, okay. Well, I gotta pause it because you might have diseases. You might have STD. I'm not with that. Now, the doctor literally tested if she had any or not. When she she goes to doctor appointments all the time. No, I'm saying like if she just met the guy. Right? Let's just say she just met the guy and he has STD. Okay. And he was just to go inside of her all raw and it's like, bro, you're going to contaminate. Good save, good save. You know, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saved that. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Yo, <laughs> Ab, yeah, Eb is fast. Yeah. I told you, one of my faves. She said, no, no. <laughs> one of my faves. Like, uh, <laughs> hey, what you were saying? I don't know. I was just going to say, that, so the science behind, like, if you could actually get through the cervix, <laughs> if you put your thing in there, it's, it's damn near impossible exactly. because the lining... um 
It, it basically it covers the whole. It covers the cervix. Say less. So okay. if you would actually penetrate, you. Yeah, that's that's wild. Like, that's, that's wild. Real wild. <laughs> so, so you wild have to boy. have like a, a ten a ten or twelve inch schlong or something like yeah, that. Or I don't got that. Something crazy <laughs> to actually yeah, that's wild. That. Yeah, twelve type crazy. Twelve is nuts. Yeah, hey. What? Yo, I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, honest. I'm, honest. I'm, honest. Nah, I'm honest. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. <laughs> it's right on, man. You know I mean? Fuck your shit, girl. Yo. Oh, my God. But wait, so you knew yeah. she was pregnant. Was she showing? No. Oh, she wasn't showing? Yeah, she wasn't showing. Oh. But it, it did feel significantly wetter than the previous times that we right. engaged with and you didn't. Wait, feel... she was still with her, her baby daddy? She was my ex. Oh, so she was like, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want like, you to hit like, before like, I deliver. Like, like, this was my pregnancy scare. Damn. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 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 I see what you're saying there. Right, right, right. Gotcha, oh, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a little different. I was like, y'all might know then. Not a, not a he, uh, not nah. a like this. Nah. This is a podcast where we ain't being open. Oh. Well, I don't know shit. Transparent. <laughs> <laughs> nah, okay, that makes a little that that makes the story a little bit. I thought yeah. you was just out here like Slinging. motherfucking. Nah, <laughs> like I'm here, I'm here like well, would I? Depends on if her man slash ex is dangerous or not. You know what I'm saying? Like if like, he's he if if if, 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 if he's he got scary, a gun, nah, Zaka nah, fight. stay away from me. But if if he's some pussy, nigga, I'm like, okay. Right. Get him back in blood, nigga. What's up with it? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm, that's like. What if she's at odds with the BD? She can't enjoy herself. Well, I actually do know someone like who was never with her baby daddy. Like they did what they did and then just wasn't together the entire time. And she eventually moved on. I don't think that she was having sex throughout the pregnancy, though. Gotcha. And I think that's why her vagina ra- ripped all the Oof. way to her butt. Oof. Oh and the doctor God. had to sew her That's oh terrifying. You see? Was, that so was you got to get it in. You got to fuck. You got to fuck. That was the 12-inch nigga? <laughs> I don't know how much inches of oh, pipe he got. But... That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, oh, he was just going crazy on that shit. For no, real. when she Yo. was giving birth. Oh, it say ripped. Wrong. <laughs> My fault. Right, because I'm like, wait, no. I'm like, wait, oh, shit. But she ripped getting... her push to the butt? Yeah, while the baby is coming out. Because oh, she man. wasn't like, you know, having sex throughout the pregnancy. Now, why would I allow that? Stay active, that's it. You got to stay, stay active. Stay busy. There we Hello. go. Guys. See what I did there? I like That's that. That's a wild promo on the, <laughs> on the pod. Gotta, gotta stay busy on it. I ain't mad at that. Oh I'm not mad God. at that at all. Um, I right, bet. Salute to them, though. Speak, speaking of staying busy, Drake been real busy. October 1st, we know OVO, October's very own. Um, Armand is one of the, 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 the leading fan club members yeah. of anything OVO. We were listening to music, playing some music before we did the pod. You know, I threw on some Wale. I'm like, ah, Florent, like, we here. <laughs> Florent. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought that would get the mood jumping. No. No. It didn't do it for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I threw on that Tommy Rich. I'm like, oh, this, he, he a music guy. He, say, he liked Tommy, right? Tommy cool. He, he, he Tommy ain't cool. moved his shoulders at all. <laughs> I threw on some Drake from 09. <laughs> the nigga starts singing his heart out. <laughs> what can I say, man? Drake from 09 is like that, though. Can yeah. That's a special time. That's yeah. Like, I, right? I ain't mad at that. Yeah, yeah. But Drake today, currently, I think he's still moving like he's in 09 because he's unfollowing people on social media. This again? I can't believe this is a story. Right. Everything is a story nowadays. Every single thing. I think what makes this a story is the people that he unfollowed. Exactly. There's a few names like that are obvious, like a Rick Ross. Mm-hmm. I expect him. Like I'm surprised he was even following Rick Ross this long. I thought he probably would have been did that. Like we know how Drake appears to be a little petty. He's very tapped in. He's on social media very often. So. Rick Ross, all right, cool. That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. But then we start talking uh, a few other names. Joe Budden. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I should be surprised or not based on their history. Not nah. surprising at all. That's not surprising. Nah. Not surprising at all. No? You seen the way he was shading him in that pool party on them comments on live. But that's like, that's friendly, like <laughs> yeah. back and forth, I thought. <laughs> yeah. the, the, they had a friendly kind of competition type energy, and now it just feels. Completely adversarial at this point, for sure. Now, after he penned up that paragraph, yeah, yeah. yeah. right, yeah, that was nuts. That's on Joe, we yeah. we're yeah. actually coming up on a year of that. Uh, what? Yeah, because it's October now, so oh. for all the dogs dropped October sixth, I think. So yes, and then he deluxed it. Yeah, we're yes. coming up on the anniversary of that. That's crazy. Kendrick Lamar, 
Not surprising Obvious. At all. You know what I'm saying? Again, I'm surprised he was even following him for this long. Uh, Playboy Cardi. Mm-hmm. Did y'all know they had anything? Playboy just, uh, just did the song a weekend. I love and Armand. He's, he's rumored to have a song with Kendrick coming soon. So I love Armand. It makes sense. If you think about it, Playboy Cardi had vocals on No Face. I think the DSP version, he's not on there anymore, I'm pretty sure. That is correct. So, and on No Face, he's only saying No Face for two lines. No yeah. Face. Mind you, on the weekend song, Savon, he is going verse. through what he's going through 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018 version of himself yeah. on one song. Yeah. That's a terrible song. To Thomas? Right. Gotta be. What? I ain't even heard it. No, you ain't. It's good. <laughs> yeah. That it's, gotta it's be. Not it's good. Shit it's song. trash. Not, I don't know. It has to be. It's trash. It's right. Y'all even bump it. It's good. It's he's right. not it's good. Right. It's right. It's good. He's not good. He, Who? He, There's he, a few artists y'all are trying to like convince mm-hmm. that they're that he's not one of them. He's fucking terrible. I'm not a cool big Cardi. Playboy Cardi. 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 Yeah. Exactly. Anything. Exactly. Existence. Poke it out. And that's the only one I like. Oh, but, but, hey, but you liked one. The, that's the one. <laughs> but you liked one. Hard. And that's only because Nikki was on it. Okay. 2024 is hard. Oh, she put the Nigga, voice come on. Yeah, the, um, what was this? Summer 17, Magnolia in New York. I'm really rock. Come on, y'all. Oh, that's, that's him too? Like, that's yeah. yeah, that's him. You he was in the club bumping. Yeah, I was really two. rocking. I was that's really two. rocking. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> he got I'm from Brooklyn, though. So. Yeah, facts, facts, facts. I mean, he had joints with Uzi. What was it? We'll walk up like this. I know niggas like woke up like this. Woke up to niggas. I like the radio shit. Yeah, yeah. All right, but I ain't seen here listening to his projects yeah. and acting like he is a leader of anything. I respect That's that. more for the kids. Yeah. yeah. And sure. clearly I'm not one. <laughs> so. Stupid. Yeah. Over under 96? 95. I'm 95. I'm 95. I'm 95. I'm 95. I'm on the time. Oh, right exactly. Next year's a big year for me. So oh, when, when I start lying about my age, they got to play this back. Like, you lying. So. <laughs> <laughs> but now, Drake, he unfollowed Playboy Cardi, Kendrick Lamar, Rick Ross, Joe Budden, and uh, LeBron James. Yeah. What? I think LeBron James. Because he was, was listening to the music. I, I don't know why. Uh, he wasn't just listening. He was at the pop out concert dancing his ass ah, off. He was. Having a blast. <laughs> At the Olympics, Steph Curry was like, yo, I'm tired of this song. Bron's like, I love it. Like, <laughs> Bron's, Bron's, Bron be trying to play this like, and I love Bron. Bron's my goat. But like, yeah, facts. his hip hop historian, just like, I love everything. I'm impartial ass nigga. Like, bro, you and Drake are too close for you to be like gassing up a song yeah. where niggas yeah. are calling him a pedophile. You don't like, put any stock into like LeBron basically being the king of LA in terms of sports right now? No, no and I'm not. It, 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 I mean, it, it definitely, I, I, I get it. I get why yeah. he thinks like, well, rather why he would be at the concert. He's been a fan of Kendrick Lamar. He's, he's a fan of everything. Like LeBron yeah. literally likes everything. So like, I, I get it. But he also has to know like, you doing what you did, pick like it's, it's repercussions. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. like 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 Metro told niggas, you got to pick a side. Mm-hmm. There, there's no playing the fence at this point in, in this shit, I which that. sucks. Except for fans. Mm-hmm. But I'm playing a fence. Yeah, which, damn which, right. I, like I, I, I I'm gonna strike with that fence. I, I, I respect the people who are Facts. capable of just staying in the middle and enjoying everything. Mm-hmm. But for most people, it's like nah. Like and, <laughs> they're and picking sides. I'm gonna be. I got some smoke with Metro. I just seen him do an interview. Bruh. You see yeah. what I'm talking about? Yes. I just seen him do an interview save on last week, <laughs> and I forget what the the journalist asked him. But they asked him something along the lines of, you know, how do you feel about rap fandom? Mm-hmm. with hip-hop and he goes oh i hate the fact that everybody has to pick a side mm-hmm. and i'm looking at him Stand like culture was you not the one tweeting <laughs> is the album called we don't trust you and we still don't trust you is that not picking a side <laughs> did you not tell people to pick a side when the whole thing was going down now things have calmed down a little bit y'all done caught the dub on that side oh it's it's just music it's just music he being politically correct man you gotta yeah. keep it cute in front of the white folks he man was, he the source sat down awards. with Forbes I forgot yeah, he, he was talking to Forbes so like, yeah. I get it but bro like you you contributed to that culture of people being that way like a caveat many so. people would think you were the determining factor for future rolled out two albums off pure hate like pure, off pure hate and niggas knew who he was hating on like he did make BBL Drizzy, right? No. Or remixed it? Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, he he, he sampled, sampled, sampled it, right? and put drums over Turned it. it into a <laughs> nationwide beat challenge. Competition, right? Like, bro, is that not picking us up? That like, hate, though. Come on. No, no it went crazy. It works. It works. It's more for him, though. It's just like, yo, do you not see the part you played in all of this, Twin? Yeah. <laughs> It ain't that deep, y'all. Have y'all never been beefing with nobody? See, as, Come but, on now. See, I'm going to attack you, and in, in public, I'm uh-huh. going to act like it ain't nothing. But from like, Jump Street, I'm going to be neutral, right? I'm going to be like, I'll, I'll say how I feel from Jump Street. With him, he was literally telling us, pick a side. Yeah. You got it down that hill now. Yeah. Yeah. You said that. 
<laughs> if I hate you now, I hate you forever. And that's on period. Thanks, I ain't gonna lie. No, that's on period. These motherfuckers be trying to, hey man, you know, I'm really talking, I'm talking to Forbes, all right? <laughs> I, really got, I really just love yeah. what it does for the culture, man. Like, shut the fuck oh, up, God. nigga. You had me screaming, Bro. BBO, dude. <laughs> we rapped over here. We, we, right. we did he a whole need freestyle to know podcast. We rapped over that shit. <laughs> yeah, nah, you, yeah, that, that on, I think son. I did see that interview. And it's just weird whenever you get some of these people who, who seem like they don't stand on business. Mm -hmm. Like, he seems like one of those kind of flip, floppy like type. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. sorry, Reggie. Yo, like, <laughs> like J. Cole. Yeah. <laughs> Last week, I don't know if y'all saw, but um, uh, Rory and Maul, they had, they, they, they talked about the J. Cole situation. Yeah. And it's funny because I felt like, like, I know I had this thought, but I was happy to see that somebody else kind of mentioned it. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, looking at J. Cole, Looking at what he's done over the past, let's say what, four, five, six months, Armand, you would know better than me, yeah. right? You in the trenches with this music shit. Yeah. But over the last few months, it seems like J. Cole has had a pattern of linking with the quote unquote ops yep. of a Drake. Yep. Yes? Yeah. No? Yeah. Absolutely. Do you, do, do you have the recollection of- Future, of course. ASAP Rocky, Daylight. That's three. Yeah. Isn't it one more? Uh, well, he did- uh, he did the T Grizzly song, but that's not odd. Uh, like, that's, yeah, that's neutral. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For all we know, shit. Just, that's true. Yeah, we we, we don't know. <laughs> Facts. And we just pick, speaking of like picking a side, has J Cole picked a side in your opinion? I I 100 agree with what Maul said in that Drake has made it just clear he's not fucking with niggas, and so niggas can either try and repair the relationship or go on their way. But we talked about it on the show too. Like yep. Drake is not innocent in all this, and I, I would never act like he's a victim like he's rubbed a lot of people the wrong way to the point where they wanted to form a fucking avengers to take him out <laughs> and we don't know what happened between him and cole like just the shift from them being on tour together to then cole dropping a, a diss against kendrick apologizing two days later staying silent and then popping up on future's album like that verse didn't have to come out mm. he, he could have easily said not nah, to take the verse off red leather but he left it there and he's continued to work with niggas that Drake don't fuck with. So I, I think this is pretty clear at this point. And, and Kendrick um, told us that he did cold foul. So yeah, we, we, I guess the pretending is done. We we don't know what he meant by that, but, but foul is foul. We still don't know. We still don't know. Okay, we still don't know. But foul is foul. Yeah, and Cole's an Aquarius just like me. So yeah, he can flip flop all he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cry it. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? You can flip flop if you talented. Because people gonna forget. Yeah. Yeah. Like right now. Yeah. People are just more impressed with his verses and his guest features in the mm -hmm. run. Yeah. Like, oh shit. Oh yeah, he ran away. Who cares? Like, yeah. It kind of dies away. He's 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 played it perfectly in doing the shit like Grippy, which I know y'all had a, <laughs> <Grippy>. <laughs> a whole segment about. Mm -hmm. Like doing the fun okay. the fun shit that niggas could joke about, like kind of just like popping out, doing that, linking up with a, a popular rapper in Cash Cobain. Getting that out the way and then getting back to his real rap type shit. Like, Thanks. enough time passed where, like, I mean, people are still giving him shit for what he did, but niggas also undeniably love these verses. So mm -hmm. right. it's just like, no matter what you say, like, he's still him. So, and the fall off project is still due. Yeah. So it's like, this is like the fake rollout for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I hear y'all like talk about music on your podcast, I'm always impressed by the passion in which y'all do it with. Yeah. Like, and I want to actually start with you, uh, two Bs. Where does that even come from? You just, you know, tapping in with the culture, having the interest, the passion when speaking about music in mm -hmm. that way? Well, I actually just realized where it came from recently, but my family's from Panama, as I, you know, always mention. And um, visiting Panama over the summers, like that music would be the way that me and my cousins communicated. Because even though I knew or I know how to speak Spanish, me da pena a veces. Mm -hmm. So I would just sí, like, ah, sí, sí, nah, sí, I sí. wouldn't speak. Otra vez. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say shit. And like, we would just vibe over like music. Like we both, we're all listening to Sean Paul or like reggaeton was on the rise at the time. So they're sampling all like the reggae rhythms that's here. So I just really love to stay connected with my cousins through music. That's what's up. Armand, how about yourself? Uh, it was definitely my dad. My dad was a huge influence. Like we would be watching like 106 in Park together, watching Aww. music videos, and in, in the car he would be playing Hove and Nas and Mob Deep and getting the bootleg mixtapes from the barbershop and playing those in, in the car. So. Word in the Haitian household. Yeah. yeah. Well, mom, when I was in the car what? with mom, mom would be playing gospel. So I heard okay. I heard a lot of Mary Balance. Mary. 
Donnie McClurkin, <laughs> Kirk okay, Franklin. Okay, I've been okay, telling okay. her, yo, change the station. She wasn't with it. But <laughs> Pops, my dad was definitely a huge influence on my music shit. That's I think. fire. And even still to this day, he'll come in the crib randomly and like ask me like, yo, what's up with this Diddy shit? Or what's up with That's like, hard. yo, this that. J. Cole shit? Like, yeah. I remember when, when I went to Toronto for the Drake show and I came back, he was like, yo, Drake having stomach issues? I was like, nigga, how do you know this? <laughs> like, what do you listen to? He more tapped into more people. Yeah, no, he, he's still Dude. super tapped into this day. So it's, it's cool that we have that to bond over. That's dope. That's fine. Yeah. What was um like the inception of y'all connecting on Stay Busy? Like, how did that happen? Because as you all know, a lot of our listeners, uh, shout out to y'all for even staying with us, tapping in with us, following us along this journey, because there's been different iterations of our podcast. You yeah, know what relax. I'm saying? Like, from day one till now, there's a lot of moving parts, a mm -hmm. lot of, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just changed over the years. And I know, you know, being friends with Armand, it's also changed how your structure of your podcast and everything and how it looks. So how did you guys like link up and how did you know, like, all right, this, this is, this is it right now. Yeah. Uh, we met summer 17 when I interned at the source magazine and we were like, cool. We weren't like super friendly or whatever. We was cool. Like mm -hmm. we see each other in the office. It was cool. Like yeah. she was, she was someone who I liked to talk to. Like she was doing her thing. I was, I was inspired because I was like new to the space, just my eyes wide open, just trying to learn everything. And she the good seemed, old days. yeah. <laughs> and she seemed just very like, she just got in got to work and like the boss really loved her and all that. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay, cool. Like, you know, that's someone who I could look up to and internship ended. I remember like during the pandemic, uh, it was like three years later. She DM'd me because I think it was one day one of my articles went viral. I don't remember which one. It might have been that the, was Brent the Brent one. The Brent one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She that DM'd one, me. That one did numbers. And yeah. she was like, hey, I was like, oh, shit. Ebony, like, oh, shit. Like, yo, we haven't talked in years. Like, yeah, what's good with you? you and so we follow each other back and then we're just engaging on the timeline. A couple of years later, I bring her on Stay Busy for Women's History Month. And she was cool. Like, me and Nick naturally vibed with her. My favorite interview, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was, was really great. good. It was great. Right. It was great. And so. As we were having the conversations with Nick, where he was like, yo, I'm going to step back from being a co-host and just produce, we were thinking of who my next co-host would be. And Ebony's name came up a lot. I know uh, Savon rocked with us for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then it came time again to be like, all right, like we need to bring someone in. And Ebony's name was top of the list, so. And I hit him up. Yeah. My homegirl, Brittany, she was like, yo, I think that would be a good look for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, you having a consistent platform, you know, where you're saying your takes. Because all my friends encourage me to just put myself out there, but mm -hmm. I'm just scared to get canceled, so. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you scared to get canceled? You going to go all the way? I, it's, sometimes <sighs> yeah. I can. Like, if I get real comfortable, it just get real. Like, you know, I was raised in Flatbush, Brooklyn. Uh -huh. Like, by yeah. Caribbean immigrants, oh. Hispanic immigrants, you know, like she don't be politically correct all the time. It's get hectic. So it's like, I just try to keep it cute. So who saves you from you when you're about to get canceled? Because I got a nigga in the back named Kieran, <laughs> who I know we all work with very closely. Killer. <laughs> Killer. <laughs> Killer. He will pull me to the side. Like, hey, man, I uh, really don't think we should go with this. Yeah. But he actually has gotten to the point where now. <laughs> he get all right. Before he even gets <laughs> right, right, right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. <laughs> That's how I know he fucked up. He walked through that door right. I'd be like, ah, shit. What now? What now? <laughs> <laughs> like, how? How do you know what you need to filter or or what do you like? What's your filter process? Well, I'm a black woman, so mm -hmm. society don't like people like me. So I have learned and been conditioned to like, you know, minimize myself or compartmentalize myself if I feel like it's not a safe space. So society, I guess. Mm -hmm. But my friends are in the back of me like Pull the trigger. Go ahead. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, no, y'all. I can't do this I don't right now. Like, no, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that exhausting? Though? Very. I yeah. I'm so tired of acting yeah. like I'm not crazy. But yeah. me too. I got bills to pay and I got a mortgage now. So <laughs> shout out to you. Shout, shout out, out to you. Congrats, congrats. And, and, keep it cute. and that was one of the things that really um intrigued me as having her as a co-host. Like I, I, Nick and I had a great dynamic, and I would I would never like talk down on that. But she brings something different to where we, we disagree. And New York. She, she says whatever is on her mind at any time, but it's great. Well, not always. Yeah, and that's the game. Right, right, right. Like, <laughs> there, there are definitely moments where, 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 we, where we have to produce her a little bit. <laughs> but, for, but, like, I, I really just enjoy, like, coming in, us not talking about our, our opinions on things and just, like, presenting something and see where she's going to go. Sometimes we might agree 100%. Sometimes she just completely is like, fuck that. No. I'm like, he's ugly. Yeah. But Damn. It's, it's a really fun dynamic. And it's like, I think for podcasters, you, you guys are aware of your listeners. They're tapped in the YouTube comments, the Twitter community, all that. Yeah. We, we don't necessarily have all that going yet. But when I get texts from people 
or I'm in group chats with people and they're like, yo, like Miss Two Bees was wilding this week or like, <laughs> yo, like great conversation. Like getting that feedback, it's like, okay, this this was the, the right pick. And mm-hmm. Will too, shout yeah. out to Will, love Will. Yeah. Um, like this this dynamic that we have, which is still growing. Like sure. we, mm-hmm. we really just kind of put this together without really getting to test it out. And I, I feel like every week we're getting better. Like we'll, we'll, we'll finish an episode and be like, yo, that was, that was fun. Like mm-hmm. we had a lot of fun with that. We're doing better. And I think even if I were to go back and listen to our first episode this season, I'd be like, damn, that, that was awkward compared mm-hmm. to where we're at now. Right. Yeah. So I, I love that people are enjoying her. Um, as as my co-host, because... what they said, I'm the next Wendy. Yeah, yeah. Hello. <laughs> yo, yo, I, I, I was at some event last week. We I, need that. Too. I, I, mm-hmm. I forget the event, but they were like, "Yo, oh, it, it was the future listening," and uh, they were like, "Yo, Mr. B is on your show now." I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yo, she she's a nice Wendy Williams. Like, she's crazy." I was <laughs> like, "I love to hear it." Like, he's been saying that since fine. I was young. We need that. But, though. Uh, but I'm but Wendy had Kevin. When Total pulled up to beat her ass, Big Kev was right there like, not my bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's slow <laughs> if, down. If somebody want to be my yeah. Kevin, mm-hmm. then I'm going to go I don't go know if you want that. <laughs> I don't know if you want well, that. I meant the muscle part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The muscle part. <laughs> Hold up. You know Wendy. You don't, yeah. you don't want no Kev. <laughs> but I know what you're saying. I know exactly what you mean. Y- y'all are two-thirds of the podcast. Mm-hmm. I know there's another part of your pod. Can y'all speak to Will and his contribution? Yeah. Yes. I met Will a couple years ago. Um, we were in like the same group chat. It was like kind of like a music industry chat they were like a and r's producers and just people in different roles and i just he and i would always kind of agree on things or i just like the way that he presented things in the group chat there's a lot of people who would just kind of be saying shit Mm -hmm. (laughs) and will and also i knew his resume working at apple music managing cash cobain like all the things he does like he has a certain foundation he does programming at apple exactly yeah yeah. so i was just like okay like he's 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 connected because i also wanted people who were like had motion on, on their own as you should and like for sure. the motion is motion exactly so <laughs> bringing them into the show combining our motion but then also helping them to ascend as individuals and i thought that will could use a platform to really speak consistently because he just has like these really big ideas like the way he thinks is just very different so um yeah it was uh it was something i spoke to him about he was very excited about it and um, he's he's been great. He he'd never really done a podcast before, mm-hmm. so that was like a risk in itself, putting someone behind a mic who'd never done it. But we definitely are seeing like him get better every week, and I think our chemistry is getting better every week. So That's fine. Yeah. very thankful for Will for sure. Will's my favorite transplant. <laughs> my favorite transplant. Like you love you, Will. <laughs> you guys have worked in uh, entities within the industry, music industry, etc. I've spoken about this here before. I want to ask you guys specifically because yep. you guys have had a plethora of jobs and roles and things of that nature. You know who I'm scared of? I'm scared for the kids in college who went to school for what we do now. Mm -hmm. Because we've seen how, again, things are being downsized, not only within the music labels, but also within who cover them. So just what is some advice that you would give to those kids right now? Because it's scary right now. Be an influencer. Shake some ass. You don't gotta shake ass, oh, right. but be an influencer. You just said be an influencer. It was kind of like my fault. Nah, but be a, you be could be a lifestyle them. influencer. Okay. You could be, you know, you can create skits or just create content. I think that you just need to one, be original, be creative, and just see where there is a demand. Like, don't hop on a wave that's already oversaturated. Um, make sure that you bring something unique. Mm-hmm. But other than that, we're all figuring this shit out right now ourselves. Yeah. Like. I don't even know what the fuck to do. I don't even know if I still want to do this shit. (laughs) It it sucks to be in a position where like I almost, if anyone were to ask me like for advice about going to music and I would have to think about, do I even want to encourage you to work in music right now? Right. Right. Like it is changing journalism, um, label situations, just everything is just so different from even when I got started. I've been doing this for like 10 years now and it just, it's, changed so much and i'm seeing the value of writers decrease significantly and i'm seeing the black voices who are at the labels who were helping to uplift black artists who are talented and deserve that support it's not a priority anymore you look at the billboard hot 100 rap is barely there it's being white look at the billboard 200 like you might get a future goes number one next week then he drops off like the next week it's just like we're not we're not getting the the support and the 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 love and acclaim that we had just a, a few years ago. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would I would have to really think about if I would even advise someone to go into music. Like I love how real y'all just kept it because I'll be honest, when I was in college at the time, 
I, me and Savon went to the same school. Mm -hmm. We were one of the people in the cro program that took media studies seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those majors where you could kind of skate, yeah. right? You could drink every weekend if you wanted to. Yeah. You could smoke yeah. every day if you wanted to. You could get tattoos. You get tattoos. Like our parents said. Exactly, right? Because you're looking <laughs> at it like, yo, my peers, they're going to school to be a doctor, lawyer, et cetera. So maybe some of those kids might not really take it that seriously. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm glad y'all kept it real because I don't want to scare them out there. But I will say, it. this is more the time to take it very seriously. Yeah. Yes. And independence, right? Yeah. Like yes. How you guys have independent, you know, done things in an independent way for your own selves, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Yeah. And it sucks because I, I know when I was coming up, there was a lot of like pay your dues talk. Like, like yeah. you got to grind. The internship might be unpaid. Yeah. You might not get paid for a while. And right. I, I believed that, okay, I have to go through that to get to where I want to get. Thankfully, I am where I am. But my whole thing now has been like, trying to make things not easier for people but just be like yo there's certain routes you don't gotta go like you don't gotta be broke like like you you can find ways <laughs> yeah. to, to make money for yourself and still strive to get to where you want to be and right. yeah so now it's just like telling someone to pay their dues like I, it took me eight years to get where i'm at now like it might take someone much longer i'm like i don't want you to be 32 still trying to figure it out like, yeah it's, no, it's tough real. i said it's cringe tough. i yeah, think for I, sure. I think um just the 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 landscape and inflation of the economy doesn't allow you to pay dues in the same way that you had to in like yesteryear mm -hmm. yeah. right like before i could be broke mm -hmm. and still believe in myself enough and still live yeah, and make ends meet you know what i'm now saying like I might stab you. today <laughs> i might have i might have to get a little bit creative <laughs> on how i want to follow my passion because um it's like a perfect storm of shit that's happening mm -hmm. right now right yeah. like with inflation um, the cost of living, those kind of things, the lack of opportunities, right? Like a lot of people are saying, this is not the time to quit your job. Yeah. No matter how much you hate it, you better keep and hold on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because of the landscape. So yeah. um, I get and I feel everything that you're saying because I don't know what I would tell somebody. Like I want to believe in myself to the point where it's like, I bet I can tell you everything that I told myself, mm -hmm. which is consistency, which is sacrifice, uh, which is work ethic, mm -hmm. right? Those are the principles that I use and follow to kind of get to where I am today. Yeah. But I don't know if that translates to the person who's 21 years old in 2024, Yeah, right? Like if they can't put a meal on their table or mm -hmm. if rent is as much as a mortgage, how can I expect somebody to still have that drive and maintain that consistency, consistency mm -hmm. in their passion if is no light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, even when I was doing shit, like I was, I was, I was working for people who were making hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, and I wasn't getting paid anything. But at the time, I'm like, you know what? This is gonna work out because clearly they made it work. Mm -hmm. There was a light at the end of the tunnel for me. Yeah. I don't know if that exists for kids or teenagers, 20 year olds today. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of them don't have the patience to see that through either. Right. And I and I get it. I can put the gratification. Like, Social media. Right. Yeah, like like I was it, about to say that. it's too much happening in the world for you to wait here for five years and you can maybe go there and be making bread in a year. Yeah. Like I so I get it. Like that belief that I'd go somewhere else and be doing better. Like they, they don't have that. I feel like they don't necessarily have that see it through mentality. So yeah. even the interns. Yeah, yeah, the they, interns they get paid. They don't need that mentality. Like, yeah. all you need is 10K on TikTok and you're eligible for the creator fund. Yo, add that ass, y'all. She wants y'all to really become She's a content in. creator. She's dead ass. Like, Come on. I don't want it because that's why I don't write no more. Yeah. <laughs> I, I pivoted. So you started out as a writer. Yeah, I started off, me and Armand met at the Source Magazine. I was there from, I walked in those doors when I was 19 years old, y'all. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Like, I was yeah. there for a minute. So I was writing 10 articles a day covering mm. events after doing interviews, like transcribing. It wasn't no AI transcribing it for yeah. me. I was listening to that shit and writing it myself. So it was a lot. Yeah. It's funny because I kind of had this a similar switch. I thought I wanted to be a writer too. I was like, all right, this is how I'm going to get my way in. This is my passion. Like, mm -hmm. writing is also my first love. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, whenever I talk to people and I tell them whatever, how I got here, it's like, no, the foundation of who I am, my being, is writing. Mm -hmm. I love to write. I love to express myself through words. I love to just create a story, even if it's the dumbest article in the world, yep. to have a beginning, middle, and end was very essential to my creative process. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I get what you're saying. Yeah. But then, and salute to you and Reggie. I always say this to Reggie when she's here too. Mm -hmm. It takes a certain level of passion and belief in your pen 
to really continue that writing shit. Right. Yeah. Because at some point, you're going to be in the party turning up lit, like, damn, I got to write this article tomorrow. Mm. But then think about, wait, what these niggas go deposit in my account? Yeah. <laughs> and this was this was years ago. Yeah. I'm still interning. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. I don't yeah. know what it's like at that level. Yeah. I've never been at a Reggie or Armand level. But I know climbing that ladder, I was like, man, what a mic. <laughs> I mean, on a salary level, it's a bit different, like yeah. in regards to stability. I've never been salary, by but the way. But yeah. the emotion is still there. Like your salary, you don't want to be there like doing aggregated stories or yeah. repurposing stories all day mm-hmm. or there are certain pitches or stories that won't get approved because of like branded content. Like if the outlet is in bed with a brand that is like, no, you can't speak out against Israel. Like it's just certain mm-hmm. things. Like I was at BET um, when the Diddy charges came out and they didn't want to write about it. Mm. Wow. BET did not want to write about it. They just gave him the award, mm. the Lifetime Award. And when I asked the um, editor, like, are we going to do this? She was like, hmm. Hmm. she's not there no more and they're yeah. reporting it now because I know who's <laughs> approving that over there now like she don't give a fuck yeah. but but before before the politics yeah <clears throat> it was an older woman um did he just got an award so it's too much too much politics to mm-hmm. like yeah. continue to enjoy it like unless you're like a Andre G or something mm-hmm. yeah other than that that's crazy yeah. that's crazy or doing that's cover tough. stories that's 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 crazy. And even that is still branded. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, I'm on talking about writing. Mm-hmm. Um, what what's that been like? Cause you work with Reggie. Yep. You and Reggie, yes. I work at Vibe Magazine yes, very indeed. closely. Yeah. What's that like working with Reggie in that capacity? I know, right? but it's like potting with her. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Um, I mean, we we've, we've been friends for like ten years now too, which is crazy to think about. And. She was always like someone who, when I decided to pivot to music journalism, she was like one of the first people I talked to about it. And we, she, we supported each other along the way. And like, she was cooking way before I was like, she was interning at billboard, she working with genius, DJ booth placements, that. all that. And it was, it was inspiring for me. I, I'm not going to front. I was, I, I was hating a little bit. Like a, 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 little, a little bit. <laughs> Most niggas be hating. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit. A little right. bit. But I, I just turned it into motivation. Like mm-hmm. I, I just use it to be like, all right, I just need to go harder. Like that's Facts. it. Facts. Um, and so all these years later, cause she's, and she says it all the time. She's very much so out of her phase where like, She's outside all the time and like at all the all the events. Like she she's very chill. So I think being an editor is a perfect role for her, where mm. she's just helping other writers to get better. Um and yeah, so we we have a really good working relationship, like joking with each other on Slack and grabbing <laughs> gra- grabbing lunch together. And wow. yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's a really interesting full circle moment because she she really encouraged and pushed me to go intern at the source because she interned there a year before me. And now I turn in articles to her multiple times a day, <laughs> but it's cool. It's Sorry. cool. Like, I, I love it. I oh, love so it. she be grading your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, 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 she be <laughs> editing, good sis. revising all that. Right? I'm uh-huh. proud. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, proud. Yeah, Making yeah. sure them indentations is right. There you go. I mean, <laughs> all that shit. Right. All that shit. That's fire. Pros man. and syntax and all yeah. that. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Regina holds it down. So, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Yo, I'm just remembering. Oh, my God. Armand, you're the f- reason why I started writing. You you did work at Kazi for a bit, yes. What Aww. the fuck? Yes, yes, indeed. This is we, a bunch of full circle moments. Nah, I know that. We, we, you know that? We, I didn't even know this nigga wrote. We all go we, way back. Like, oh my God, you just fucked my head up. Yeah, man. That's crazy. Like, I, I used to listen to Savon on the Joe Budden podcast <laughs> and like, I felt like I was a fan of this nigga. Like, like, <laughs> like when, 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 when they gave you the mic for episode two hundred, I was hype. Like, oh, uh, oh, his shit. memory is so Save on talking. Oh like, oh, shit. And he was funny. They used to cook him because uh, he would be checking the Apple Music playlist. <laughs> <laughs> I got some they used to fire. For, forgettable moments on that podcast. No, unforgettable. Lie. Unforgettable. No, they are forgettable for me. I forgot them. I'll never forget. forget. I'll right, be like, I'll never forget. I did that corny <laughs> shit. They used to fry us up. Yeah, no, nah, we it's crazy how how far back we go. I've known you niggas for like five, six years now. And yeah. Like, it's it's Damn, it's great five. to like call your friends and shit. family for sure. and shit. For but, sure. Yeah. Damn. Thank you. I, it, it, now that you kind of mentioned that, right, we've seen each other in our personal lives and even professionally go through dif- different like chapters and phases yeah. and shit like that. So I want to kind of switch gears a little bit. And, and <laughs> last week, 
I told you I was in DR. Yeah. And I was talking mm-hmm. to my mom. I called my mom because I was having so much fun seeing all the sites and shit. I forgot about moms. Mm-hmm. So that's crazy. I ended up calling my mom on like day four of five. And that's I'm crazy. Like, hey, mom, how you doing? Whatever. We catching up. So she catching me up on <laughs> shit. You oh ain't calling when you touch down? I like, text her. I text her. I oh, shot text her. Now, my mom be I'm like, good. I need to hear your voice. voice. Anybody can text me. <laughs> that's that's And that's I was great. like, oh my God, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> but if they would have like kidnapped me in DR, I would have sound like, hey, Hey, mi amigo de Nero. <laughs> pesos. Mi amigo de Nero. Yeah, they would have just started hitting moms with mad Spanish. But <sighs> so I'm talking to my mom, I'm catching up and shit. And she wanted me to bring this guy. She didn't want me to bring this, actually. I told mm-hmm. her, hey, if we're going to have this conversation, then I need to be transparent with you and let you know that I'm going to tell my friends in the audience, mm-hmm. right? Like okay. I told her, we're not going to cross this line unless you don't like want the world to hear what we're about to talk about. So she knows where I'm going at. Mm-hmm. Okay. For context, okay, two Bs in Armand. My mom, she's uh, recently divorced within mm-hmm. like the last year or so. She's hey, divorced. Congrats. Life is changing, shifting. She's moving. She's trying to figure out some things. Uh, me and my mom, we're only 17 years apart, right? Mm. That's like my best friend. So we, we chop it up about shit. Yeah. yeah. We talk. So while I'm in DR, oh, you she tells talk. me that she is exploring dating apps. Wow. No. Now, wow. again, this is sensitive information that I told I was going to tell the world. Yeah. <laughs> so, she, she cleared this? I don't care. <laughs> I told her. Did she clear it? Yes, I told her okay, this is what's going to happen. Care. I'm like, hold on. This no. your version of trying to find her man? No, nah, no, 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 I'm not trying to call my mother. No, okay, 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 we ain't gonna do all that. Okay, good, good. But I was curious because she asked me about it. She's like, all right, so what's your go to? I'm like, that's tough. That's what she asked me. She thought that I was on dating apps. I'm like, ma, I'm not on, I I can't be. Yeah, like, because she really doesn't know. Like, I don't know the last time you've spoken to somebody who was in a relationship for 30 years Mm -hmm. and then got out. They're clueless. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It's a new world. Somebody yeah. who was in a very long relationship, I can't imagine being in a 30 year, getting out and be like, wait, what's going on? Damn, I'm back That's outside. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, and it, w- it, w- it was kind of wicked for her. So yeah. I told her I would bring this conversation to my friends. Yeah. Uh, so I'm curious to know, what is y'all relationship like with dating apps? Are y'all on dating apps? I told her straight up. I'm like, look, my Instagram's the only dating app that I've been on. And mm, it's a meta. dating app by default. Yeah. <laughs> like it, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it just happens to be there. The last time I was on a dating app, somebody recognized me. Exactly. Yo, you told me about That's that. Sure, I remember. It was exactly. embarrassing. Yeah. I know I was in her group chat. <laughs> <laughs> I deleted the app. I never went back on again. Like you did that while this podcast was going. Why you gotta say all that? That's my brave. fault. Wow. Brave I was recognized you? once too. <laughs> By a childhood friend, and he dead ass wrote me like, "What you doing here?" Yeah. And I was like, "Same thing you doing here, Aunt?" Because that's not even his name. He had a fake name on that shit, so I was like, "Yo, son." And then I saw my weed man too. Oh, that's crazy. They be you, on it. You try right? trap or left? No, I, I first of all, I didn't even know that you could block them, so I was annoyed because I just like kept going, uh-huh. and I'm just like, "Damn, he probably saw me. Mm-hmm. He probably saw me." But um. Yeah, no. Once my homie wrote me, like my childhood friend, like laughing, like laugh my ass off. What you doing here? I was like, yes, I'm time to clear this shit up. So you're not on dating apps at all? No, absolutely not. I get niggas in real life. When was the last time you were on a dating app? (laughs) That first and last time was like three years ago, maybe two years ago. No, no bueno. No, no, no. no. (laughs) It's just like I just feel like if I'm on there as a woman, it just gives like I want to fuck vibes immediately, and that's just not what I'm trying to give off. Can I ask which one you on? What vibe I'm on? No, no, no. No. (laughs) No. 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 Oh yeah, okay. I was on there. All the hood niggas is on there. Okay. That's why I saw my weed man weed on there. Weed man on there, everything on Everybody's there. Everybody's on there. I said, nah, no <laughs> yeah. way. This shit is just not it for me. It just give thirsty vibes too. I'm like a stare yeah. at you from across the room so you can shoot your shot type mm. of person. You was like, giving like Christian Mingle. Wow. Me? I, <laughs> no, that. Was, I give Christian Mingle. I love good. a God-fearing man. I, so. I, 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 I love me a God-fearing man. Amen. I did that once. Amen. Wait, what, Christian Mingle? Yeah, I oh got God. I got broken up with once, and I'm like, you know what? Forget this, man. You, I'm gonna go on there, but I was scared, so I made the, I made facts. Jesus, where you at, Lord? What you ain't read your Bible enough? Say it like that. Nah, so like I made the profile, and then I went through it. Like I went through with making it, and I'm just like, 
Damn, what if somebody on here sees me? Exactly. That'd be not just like you. Yeah. Y'all are mad vain. I feel pathetic. Uh, you mean? Just what? like you, twin. No, 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 no. <laughs> if, if we didn't do what we did, I would be on dating apps. But Same. we do what we, we, we do. do. We do. <laughs> I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Well, right. Well, you right. said you got to the only one motion over here. Come on, man. Niggas having. Come on, man. Can't be on there. They're going to be like, yo, two Bs, I see you on there. Like, nah, nah, nah. I'm cool. I'm cool. What was your description? Uh, I don't remember. How you describe yourself? <laughs> I don't. Remember. I didn't put too much into it. I'm gonna be nah, honest. Okay, like, all right. I didn't put too much into it. My homegirl helped me make it because she's just concerned about my dating life. Okay, that's, that's a, a good, good friend. friend. Is hell yeah. That's a good friend. That's no. Good. Yeah. No. Why not? But no, nah, get you into that. Hook yeah. me up with someone. Don't make a fucking app. <laughs> Okay. Mm. Don't make a fucking account. What if her batch wasn't for you? It def wasn't. See that? <laughs> def wasn't. So it's just mind your business. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> Armand? Uh, I've used Tinder back in the day. I used Bumble back in the day. Um, I, I The only one I currently have right now, and I barely use it, is Hinge. Um, but like you, my most success has come from Twitter and Instagram. Hmm. Twitter because he said, "Like me, hold up." <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> he not like you. you said it. Yeah. You said it. Instagram. Uh, was you said it. I said it. You it, said it's a. He said, I said it to my mom. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, well, whatever the case is, Twitter yeah. I think is good because, yeah. like, obviously I talk about music a lot on there, so you can connect with people through music, mm-hmm. and they, they they just see my thoughts, they see my interests. Instagram, obviously, you see what I'm doing in life. Like, it's just, you know, it's, like, it's, it's, you're just looking at a virtual resume pretty much. Like, oh, this nigga be in Cancun. He be, he be talking to OVO artists, all this. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's a pretty easy sell. So. Facts, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Instagram and Twitter. Did, I've, 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 I've thrived on Instagram and Twitter. Dating apps, had like a few hookups on them, but I haven't had like major success. So I just, I stay off. That's for the OA4. Yeah. For me? Exactly. Oh, yeah. I've been on it all, y'all. <laughs> Have you? Tinder, BLK, Hinge. That's the one where the girls message you first? What? I don't know. I, I ain't messaging nobody first. I think <laughs> Bumble is the one where girls Yeah, that's first. the one in college they was on. That's what, yeah. Uh, I, I don't like that Bumble. one already. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was weird. I ain't gonna lie. I, 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 I didn't like the approach. It was, I was, it was like, a really weird. It's like you, you couldn't message the girl. Yeah, first. like you, you couldn't. No, they wouldn't allow you. Yeah. What if it was girl on girl? Mm, I like where your head is at. Me too. I like where your head is at. I was never presented with that scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep her around. That's real. Yeah, <laughs> Shit, like, I was even looking for the milfs on there. I forgot what that one was oh, called. Absolutely, the milfs. Yeah, they have, they have one dedicated to milfs. Yeah, I was in college trying to be a sugar baby. <laughs> My age range is set from like twenty five to like forty three. <laughs> Like, okay. Need me an older joint. I I really love older. I've talked about it on our Patreon, but like older women, the wave. I I'm I'm only dating older women now. Why, why is I'm it? Because they tend to you. They're yes. One they're they're <laughs> very caring. They're very mature. Like all all the entitlement and then the bullshit. Like you don't like <laughs> no, you, you just don't got to deal with that. Like, yeah, let it out. Let, let it out. Let it out. Hey man. Hey, man. Like, Wait. Is... No no shade. How old what your out? mom? My mom. Oh, yeah. Um. I'll say she's not fifty yet. Okay, imagine an Armand talking about her like this. Like, yeah. ah, <laughs> my mom, she ain't fifty. Yeah, go put it. Oh, <laughs> but I know seventeen year guy, yeah, so yeah, yeah. she's still young. Yeah, That's yeah, crazy. she's still Shout young. Time. Clearly, she's in these streets, you know? and she needs to chill. <laughs> not too much on her. She mama gotta have a life too, hey, Jody. Man. I see right. Jody. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, how y'all think um, Diddy was recruiting? Oh my god. <sighs> hmm. Nah, we was talking dating Yo. apps and all that. How you yeah, think he was Diddy? doing it through music? That's he, what he yeah, was doing. Yeah, I mean, literally a story Allegedly. came out today that he promised some nine year old a, a record deal. Oh, that's God. disgusting. And then he assaulted the nine year old. Like, I hope not. Allegedly. Like a nine year old is, is a bit a lot, but. <sighs> that's the story know. that came out 120 civil cases 60 guys 60 women and i'm not joking bro yeah it's literally 60 guys and 60 women uh this is not gonna be a class action suit though no nah. mm-hmm. this is they're all gonna file individually yeah, yeah. so um the, the weird thing or well, not weird yeah. but the interesting thing is that guy tony busby he also represented the females that alleged deshaun watson of doing the whole thing mm. so like, i don't know how the mm. legal su- system works but in my non-legal mind it came across like wait like is there a way to fish for people who were allegedly or who kind of would hey. say that they were, you know what I mean? He got a hotline right now. Yeah. yeah. So, Yo, you, this shit you seen is it? Or just knowing knowing that it's it's, it's his area of expertise. Like. Yeah. So, what exactly is the story? Because I I, I I tried to get a little segue off not knowing <laughs> yeah. that this nigga was diddling. Yeah. 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 Uh, the story. The story is that he's got a long road ahead. Long story short, right? He mentioned that these are civil suits. Not criminal cases as of yet, but I think if 
I'm the defense. No, if I'm the if I'm the other side of Diddy, I'm trying to bleed him out. I want him to spend as much money as as he could go through, whether it be some real cases, whether it be some fake cases. But they're gonna bleed him out, though he deserves it. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, just the nine year old stood out, mm-hmm. yeah. and that was insane. the people that might be mentioned within these civil suits. Yeah, I don't want to out nobody, but. I, <laughs> When he when he says nine years old in that time, I think B five. Mm. Like I just think about certain boy groups mm. or children that he was close to during that oh one oh two time, etc. And I could be completely wrong. Again, these cases are all alleged as of now. But um, yeah, just it's a long road ahead for yeah. Diddy. Yeah. For me, it's tricky to always report and talk about these kind of things mm-hmm. because they teach you that. You know, everybody is innocent until proven guilty, right? But then the court of public opinion is a thing, right? Like, you can't deny that what you hear, what you're seeing, um, the evidence or the the, the stories that you put together in your own head, it plays a part. It's an influential factor when you hear or see a headline on certain things, right? But I try to always think in that nature, but Diddy and people like Diddy make it extremely hard to abide by innocent and too proven guilty. There's just so much working against him right now. I mean, there's been rumors about him for years. Mm-hmm. Literally. And so when you get the first lawsuit and then you have like seven more come after that, and then you get Homeland Security raiding his homes and you see footage and then you see the baby oil and the guns and footage, <laughs> they have footage of the free calls. It's like at, at that point, I, I don't like as much as I want to still mm-hmm. stick to the innocent until proven guilty thing. There's just too much working against him. Right to, in your face. Yeah. Like, well, well, I believed really, Wendy Williams. Mm. Well, she, she been saying it. I believed Wendy the first time. And what was she saying? Yeah, For those who may not know. She been accused Diddy of doing the freak offs, accused him of being sexually attracted to men, yeah. accused him of just a lot of the things that he's already being accused of. And she, he was the reason that she got ran out of New York and Mm -hmm. like off radio, but the ratings dropped and like, she was really a fan favorite. So she got brought back because she's all, she's a truth teller. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's a liar. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, again, he did himself no favors when he got on his phone, Mm -hmm. he looked us dead in our face Mm -hmm. and he said, I ain't do shit. Mm -hmm. She trying to get some money out of me. I'm sorry. He never said who he was sorry to, Mm -hmm. but he said that he was sorry. He was fucked up. He Mm -hmm. was going through a real dark time in his life. And then the video came out. And this was six months after, because he put out a statement in December saying he didn't do anything. Yeah. Remember? I, I will fight for my name, my yeah. family, or the truth, all this shit. So it's like, okay, like you, 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 you doubling down on the fact you're innocent. Yeah, but Kid oh. Cudi corroborated Cassie's claims about the car. Yeah. So once yeah. he went on Twitter with that shit, I'm like, yeah, no. And and uh, Aunt Glizzy also said it too. Uh, yeah. he was on a podcast and was kind of detailing the moments as to what happened, even when you know who he was uh, hanging off the balcony and stuff like that. My dog Wale. Yeah, yeah like it is my night job brother. Over- <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's an overwhelming amount of public information yeah. for us to like. And you know. and too, like if you look over all over Twitter, <laughs> um. Not Twitter, uh, YouTube. For some reason, all the stuff that happened that Diddy was on um, a camera for, um, you know, starts to coming coming to the forefront of you know just the mentions and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. you kind of see different moments and different interviews that he's had where like the stories sound kind of funny and they sound really off. Yeah, yeah. And, like there's like a a cringe laugh to it, but like the, in your mind, you're like, there's no way this is real. Yeah, right. like the one with Fab when he was like, "You ain't never party with me, Daddy." I was like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, we know like, who ain't gonna get mentioned in that shit, though." Yeah, yeah. We know Brooklyn's on. I just rewatched that entire video. Yeah, I, the whole interview. Yo, I re- you lying? I rewatched. It. I had to. Nasty. I had to do. And what's, and what's Fab like? Like, I don't it's even the body remember. language. Yeah. They say ninety percent of communication is body language. He was uncomfortable, yeah, and sure. so was Jada. Yep. Yeah. Jada looked uncomfortable too, and so was Nori. But Nori, and- Nori was on the up. Right. Nori, his show's getting lit. He's trying to get all the bags. Like, Nori's a bag whore. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Go get your bag. Salute. <laughs> yeah. You was a 1999 nigga. You was up. Carry you in. know, he had some some slow years, and then he found something that worked. So I get Proud. it. When did he come on your show and he's lit? He's Ciroc boy. It's on he's Revolt. Putting all the, it's on no, it Revolt. All Revolt. I'm going to let Diddy get it all. Like, I yeah. saw all it. Like, that's why I watched it. Because I wanted to see. I was doing a breakdown, like a play by play, like an NFL head coach. Yeah. I got in the lab, nigga, at two in the morning, yeah. and I'm watching Diddy, Fab, mm-hmm. Jada. And Nori. You seen him tell him to blow out the candles? He looked mad uncomfortable blowing out the candles, bro. Yeah. Yo. And even at the end of last night, the collab with Keisha Cole, with like that little yeah. monologue at the end. Yeah. I'm like... Yeah. yeah, go listen to that if you haven't, because it's not on like the radio version of the song, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but oh. it is, it's on the album version. I know. Okay. Yeah, 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 it's on the album like, version. I heard that. No, yeah, 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 it's out there. I'm just saying like, a lot of people may not be familiar. This motherfucker. Yeah, he, he <laughs> just sounds very like... like he wildin'. Dangerous. <laughs> he wildin', he wildin', he wildin'. Yeah. And it gives credence to maybe how he felt since these acts have happened. Like, wow, I've kind of left nuggets for all you niggas <laughs> about who I really am. I mean- And don't nobody give a fuck. I mean, cultural context in, is matters here, too. Like, we uh-huh. were wildin' in the early 2000s. Yeah. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, non-black people was yeah. on- Yeah, 90s, too. Mm-hmm. Like, early 2000s and early- It's like, now we're trying to be politically correct mm-hmm. and sensitive and inclusive and mm-hmm. shit. But before- I just watched Rush Hour the other day and Jackie Chan was like, what's up, my nigga? I was like, wait. He said that? Yeah. Yeah. What's up, my nigga? And I said, wait. Yeah, yeah. No, my I nigga. didn't say that. Yeah. What's up, my nah, nigga? And then he repeated it. Yo, you good? <laughs> my nigga. <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> That's what he said. Like, was, I didn't know he said that. It was that. just certain words yeah. we would just use oh, casually. No. It was nah, very saying, different times. Like, it was different times. Wild yeah. times. And it was reflected in the television we watched, the reality yes. shows, yeah. even WWE like storylines. Like, That's yes. when it was the best. I, I just watched lie. that documentary. <laughs> they was wild. The Vince McMahon shit. They was wild. Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't watched it yet, but I, I, I plan to. But I've, I've heard it was a little underwhelming for like people who are in the yeah. know with wrestling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's underwhelming. The casual fans, they're going to be mm-hmm. elated to see all that. The so, one thing they need to bring back from the 90s is steroids and baseball, though. Because <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> Mark I, yeah, I'm a fan dude trying to bet my shit. I'll be watching these games like, mm-hmm. damn, nigga, hit, hit w- some. Juan Soto. He ain't. Oh, Tony. They need to bring it back. They need to bring it back. They bringing it back. Them two bringing nah, it back for us. Not nah. steroids. We nah. not gonna put that. But on it's nat- No, it's not steroids. But it's natural. Yeah, but I want these niggas a natural steroid. These are natural steroids. I, I need right, right. eight niggas on the team <laughs> to have Buggy. fifty home runs. <laughs> mm. Like make my Paul A hit. If steroids was <laughs> here, I'd be up. I wouldn't even Nobody do the podcast. Shit, I wouldn't need the pot. I would be hitting, slamming these bets every single night. Bring the Roy's. Shoot these niggas in they ass now today. Hey, no Diddy. Bring it out. Nah, Diddy, oil it up oh. and shoot these niggas in the ass. No. I need Royce. No. I need that for the plays, bro. Mm. I would get us out the hood. Yeah. I'm saying. You might. I'm serious. Question for yeah, you, guys. What's up, here? If if you were the feds, we all we all could think that Diddy didn't act alone. He wasn't Dolo, right? Right. Definitely wasn't Dolo. Do and an indictment, yeah. a list that his associates helped him. Mm-hmm. But so like at the at the top though, there's definitely more people because I'm for sure I'm of the mindset that Diddy just didn't all of a sudden start to do this on his own. I've seen stuff that's like uh, people saying that he was once a victim, yeah, by that's you know believable. his yeah. his superior. Like, do you think if you were the cops or the feds, would you kind of sweat him out to see who else was like like at the top with him to like you know different people that he was conspiring with uh, other than. I guess who was alleged in the uh, Rico? I mean, of course they're gonna do that because they want to get as many names as possible. Mm-hmm. They want to capture as many people who was a part of it as possible. But the thing is, when you're Diddy, you are the top in mm-hmm. most cases. You're the big fish. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. are the big fish, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're the one they want. You, <laughs> yeah, you you are the one. <laughs> yeah. And it comes from ego. It comes from arrogance. It comes from um, greed. a history, greed. All of those things is just a perfect storm to make this. The, the the face of it like he is the face of it mm-hmm. like he was known for partying and he was allegedly doing these things at his parties mm-hmm. and the thing that really pisses me off about this shit is how I hear his lawyers speak on his behalf he need a new one and why he need a new one the lawyer be sounding crazy to me like in what way I don't know. He just be saying stuff like the Costco thing was like that was crazy, and then Costco came out and refuted that. Oh, That's this a is good a second. Point. Like, this is I a could second. defend him better. Yeah, <laughs> nah, you could. I think I could. Yeah, yeah, After your performance yeah, yeah. today, I know that. Right. I think I could. Yeah. I think you could. Like, like, Ab, you know, this is his uh, second legal team. Yes. The one, yeah, his original one from June let him go. Yes. Yeah. Tells you something, doesn't? Oh, it? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I like, wasn't yeah. aware. He's like incompetent. My my issue is how 
they always try to weaponize, and Diddy's been doing this for a very long time. He he tries to weaponize black excellence mm-hmm. and yeah. black people. Voter and, oh, yeah. as a black man, no, I want to show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to no, yeah, show yeah. Um, the the system that a black man can defeat the feds. When I you saw that, saying? I rolled my eyes. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you play, you still playing in my face, gang. Yeah, low key. Yeah. Like that's the thing that really is bothering me. Outside of all the allegations and stuff, yeah. I I think the way that they even rolling this shit out now is still kind of worrisome because it's like you can't be truthful with yourself no like you don't gotta this ain't a we thing nigga this ain't a black people thing bro like there's some there's evidence there's tape there's footage of you doing these things and you still trying to lean on the black support the black dollar you get what i'm saying the the black incompetence because maybe a few years ago we we would support you off the strength that you're black Mm -hmm. but now i think we're educated enough to be like yeah we black but you different yeah yeah that's very different. I mean, he probably also feels betrayed because, like, at a certain point in time, if you were a black artist and you wanted to be lit, you had to get next to him. Mm-hmm. Like, he was the gatekeeper. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So it's like it's hard to decipher like who were the victims versus who was with the shits. Mm-hmm. Like, it gets real nasty, especially when it comes to music, because it'll be remiss of me not to add the female perspective to this topic. All the female executives that I know personally who's either left music or like, you know, are just far removed from music, like they pivoted to production or some shit, Mm -hmm. they talk about how rape was the culture. Like that was Mm. the norm. Like a man would push up on you in the elevator and if you even like spoke out against it, you would lose your job the next day. Mm -hmm. So it's either you just walk away from the industry or you deal with what happens or you become you know, an accomplice to what happens in the culture. But like a lot of them think social media and the Me Too movement, because before it was just your word against, imagine going against Diddy. Like Wendy said this shit and he ran her out of New York, you know? So it's like, it is tough, especially when misogyny is like comes to play. Like Mm. we were just talking about on the pod this week, how niggas won't even say future drops mid music because Mm. of how much they love him. Mm-hmm. So imagine how they move. Well, you know, you don't got to imagine. We mm-hmm. see male groupies push bitches to get in the front all the time. For sure. It's so nasty. It is mm-hmm. nasty Disgusting. out here, like the way things have changed. Like I follow Drew Dixon on Twitter. I feel for her. Um, Who's that? She accused Russell Simmons mm. of rape. She was in the documentary and she is a, you know, she's not a groupie. Mm-hmm. She, she is worked a, at Def Jam, right? Yeah. yeah. And she made the remix. Like Got it. she invented the, the concept of, it. of a remix. So she's not someone just looking for a clout. Like she is the clout. Mm-hmm. So I believed her when she said it, but there are people who are still supporting him, mm-hmm. like the older black women in the communities, the Naomi Campbells, the Taraji P. Henson. So it's just a nasty, messy storm that is going to spill over because there are a lot of people that were just either witnesses or participants mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you're not gonna be able to tell who were the victims versus who was the groupies trying to do anything to social climb question yeah. for you guys now too right not mentioning uh you know the nastiness of it we've all heard of playboy and mm-hmm. like what kind of what went on in the playboy house with mm-hmm. hugh hefner mm-hmm. you know uh, watching all this stuff unfold if you take it well personally if i take a step back it kind of feels like it's a little bit more that's being put on again, all alleged being put on Diddy than kind of what happened with uh, even Epstein, because very similar, right? The, the very similar things happened, but it just feels like the black. I don't know if if this is a, a territory that we want to go down, but it just feels like there's more of an emphasis on like, hey, look at all these things that happened, even though he did have a long run. Um, even if you look at, and we could bleep this name, um, when had that whole thing, it just felt like droves and droves and droves of things were coming out that he had done. But, you know, we all know Epstein had tapes. Mm -hmm. Those never surfaced. He, you know, was very, was engaged with a lot of underage, um, you know, things with prominent, um, you know, politicians and everything like that. Like, do you guys feel like there's been more of an emphasis on like when black, you know what I mean? When black people are kind of like dealing with these things versus I the other. I think it's the era that we're in. Um, like shit happened what like mid 
two thousands, like late two thousands. And then he just cheated. Oh, yeah, he was just cheating. Yeah. Like he, he was. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, <laughs> at least I don't know. Yeah, sure. We don't know. <laughs> now we would have knew if that rich black nigga was. Like, <laughs> like, bro, like he was. Even throughout that, so he as like, he should. Um, but Epstein died, so it was kind of like, mm -hmm. and, and obviously they're still like litigating the whole situation and going through the legal proceedings. But like, mm -hmm. we're not able to give him his public lashings. But like, Diddy is here. Diddy was on the brother love movement. Like mm -hmm. he's he's impacted so many careers. He's been this just major figure who transcended black culture and black music. And yeah, it's like. He's empowered so many people. He's given so many people careers. He's also rubbed so many people the wrong way. I, like, I, I don't know if it's necessarily a black thing. We The system is naturally against us, but I really just think it's like the extent to what he did yeah. and his denial of it and then his owning up to it only after the video comes out and mm -hmm. just, just a combination of a bunch of different things on top of the fact, again, he was rumored to just be a weird ass nigga for so long, and <laughs> yeah. now it can be substantiated. So, and it's and I feel like it's always going to feel like that, Pierre, because it's more of them than us. Yeah, like we can name on our hands right now how many black billionaires that we can identify with. Yeah, sure. uh, okay. That's All right, you see what I'm getting at? Sure. Yeah. When yeah. it comes to the other side, oh, it, it is a plethora. Yeah. Uh -huh. When it comes to us, it's, it's certain staples uh -huh. that we go. It's them, him, him, him. Damn. So once they start going down, Pierre, that's like a hundred of ours. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah it looks a little you. different. Yeah. I know we're about to pivot to music soon. Ed, you said something about future, and I wanted to get to that real quick before Ooh. we got into that. I want you to explain what you mean by future puts out mid music. You, you didn't mean all of it, right? No. I said, <laughs> no, no, no. What'd you, what did you mean by that? <laughs> the last project wasn't good to me. The mixtape? Yeah. Mixtape Pluto? What, the album, the mixtape, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't good to me. Mm -hmm. Um, But I see people raving about it online, and mm -hmm. I'm just like, y'all lying. And I know y'all lying. I was Because I, no, no, y'all lying. And you want to know how I know y'all lying? How? Oh, huh. Because anytime I say some shit is whack, mm -hmm. eventually the public falls in line. Oh, they just start listening to you, huh? Not, not listening to me. They call me a hater. Oh yeah, but then eventually <laughs> they see what I was talking about. Okay. The, bi the biggest example I have is Little Baby. I've been saying he was really? whack since he came out. Okay. But you like some Little Baby songs? See, that's the thing with whack. For I me. just it's like so close, hard. Friends. close friends. Close friends. best close friends. And the wham 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 bitch on Little Baby line. Okay. That was clever, okay. I guess. But <laughs> other than that, we no. Used to tell each other everything. Dang. Yeah, you feel me? The little R and B vibes, yeah. I like that or whatever. But yeah. like. The the pedestal that uh -huh. he was on or put on, I just didn't agree like with, and I don't agree with the reviews that Future's <laughs> recent music has been receiving. Really? So you didn't like the two albums he put out with Metro either? They were cool. They were cool, but I just feel like he's put out, like, I think he's put out a lot of his best work, and like right now he's just doing things to fulfill contractual obligations. I can see that. You don't feel like any of what you're saying is subjective, right? Because I ain't going to lie. Like, we come from that era where it's like, I don't want to give you the wrong impression. Feel me? I need love and affection. Feel me? Mm. Like, so do you feel like it's maybe those records maybe just stuck more to you to now? Because you want to know what I think, why I think they put them on the pedestal they put them at? I briefly why. spoke about this last week on our last week's episode, right? When you get to rappers, shit, fuck their 40s. When they get into their 30s, some of them have a real difficulty trying to connect to the youth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is the outlier, one of the anomalies left as to where at 40 years old, he's still connecting and he's still making slaps to the youth. Yeah. You, get, you see where I'm getting at? Yeah. yeah. Quote, at the unquote, last concert, it, was, it right. looked like Rolling Loud in the crowd. Really? The, the A bunch of little white boys. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Barclays yeah. was looking crazy. Hood niggas rolling dice, the white boys jumping up and down. Really? I was yeah. like, oh. That's a lot going on. Yeah. Here. That's impressive. I, I was impressed. That's impressive. I was very impressed. I'm like, okay, yeah. but this is who you're mark you're marketing to. Right. So right. that's why I don't fuck with it. Got you, got you. So you, you guys are big on R&B. Yeah. Yeah. That's my first love. Oh, come on. We're gonna have a good conversation today. Mine as well. Uh let's get to some new music, right? Let's do it. Uh I think we should start at Leon Thomas. Shout out to Leon Thomas. Right. Yes, an I, artiste. An artiste for sure. You Nickelodeon see, in the building. See what happened when you leave Nickelodeon? Nickelodeon in the building. <laughs> All you gotta do is leave Nickelodeon and she get hot. And the Diddy parties. 
Say more. <laughs> Stay on focus, nigga. We nah, he said the shit. We gotta leave. You gotta leave you the Diddy shits, right. and you gotta leave Nickelodeon. I went to one. I went to a Diddy party. Really? How was that? Yeah, it was cool. It was like, and it was like a bucket list for me and my friend. Like, we like, oh shit, we had a Diddy party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I left early. I know. Yeah. yeah. Before the devil came. Yeah, I, I'm tired. That leave, that came. leave, be having me real sleepy. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, the red lights came on. <laughs> no, it was already red light. Oh yeah, yeah. It was already red yeah. lights there, but yeah. it was just such. I didn't see nothing, but mm-hmm. I, it was like I said. You wanted to get next to Dicky. You did. Like, you did want to go. To oh, it was he that time. Is that That's nigga. Time. Absolutely. Like, come yeah, on. Just up until literally this year, he yeah. was that nigga. Absolutely. Um, sorry, Leon Thomas, that we had to put some on your name. With right. You. But um, <laughs> Leon Thomas put out an album called Mutt, mm-hmm. right? And what a beautiful way to disguise being a dog. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't disguised. Uh, but you want to know why I think it was disguised? Just how beautiful a lot of the melody sounded, right? Some yeah. of the riffs, some of what he did. Uh, I, I think it's one of my favorite projects from R and B this year. Uh, I personally like it more than the Lucky Day album. Me personally, mm. um, that's big. Mm. Not mad at that. I, I do. Not mad at that. I don't know if I, I like it. I have to it. re-listen to Lucky before I agree with you. I don't know that's if fine. I even like it more than Bryson's. I don't like it more than Bryson's. That's my number one. I don't know if I even like it more than Bryson's. I don't know if I like it more than Bryson's. I almost forgot he dropped this year. That was a really good album. But I'll say this. His album is a bit more concise than Bryson's, and there's some records on that Bryson album I could do without. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I yeah. think the Leon Thomas probably yeah. was around like 13, 14. Yeah. So it's right in your face. Boom. Right to it. What you like is what you like. I want to know how you guys felt about the project. Loved it. Yeah, super dope. Uh, I I like Leon a lot. Um, been following him for a few years now. I think like he really got his big breakout moment when he produced on CLB and just uh, working with SZA and doing all the things he's doing. Last, snooze, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, snooze. Yeah, and then last year he dropped Electric Dusk, which was one of my favorite albums of last year. Mm-hmm. I think this one is even better than Electric Dusk. Like, I agree. Electric Dusk had like really high highs and then a couple songs I didn't care for. This one straight through fire, like Safe Place, Dancing with Demons, Vibes Don't Lie, Lucid Dreams, mm-hmm. The Feelings on Silent with Wale, mm-hmm. and Answer yeah. Your Phone. Like that run from Lucid Dreams to Yes It Is, I was like, cry this nigga. He, he ascended. Like, Absolutely. Really dope. And like he's got like a unique voice like he sings well it's it's just like different like he's not like a powerhouse singer necessarily but like he got range like he he could do a lot of different things and I'm, i'd be interested in hearing him live to see how it translates Same. in a live setting but um and he's talented like plays guitar plays instruments like he's really like rooted in music like he's not just a nigga who's yeah. getting in the, in the booth and singing like he's overseeing the entire process i love and that so I, I i love that about him and yeah i think he did really really great on, on my, it's a great project i think he's great at making music i think um you know what i, I what happens one I miss real R and B artists, mm. and I'm not trying to take anything away from what he did. It's a great mm-hmm. project. I see where you're getting. But at. I miss like where the fuck are they? Music. Like, I think what you're speaking to are musicians. He's a musician. No, yeah. yeah, he's very talented. He yeah. he can create. Like Snooze is a timeless song yeah. that you can hear his DNA in that song once yeah. you hear his music. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like that's his song. Scissor just sang that shit. <laughs> you can like that's how I feel when I hear Snooze. But what I mean is like. We, 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 and I know this is probably sound like a broken record. A lot of people have said this over the years. <laughs> like, we just, where's the male R&B? That's the thing. But it's hard for me to have these conversations and try to lower the bar and try to lower my standard yeah. to be like, oh yeah, this is great. It's, it's good. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Yeah. And he's really good at what he does, but it's hard for me to have a conversation and compare him or, or, or. Yeah, nah, that ain't it. I mean, yeah, niggas ain't it. I'm you in should, alignment with so, that. So, so, you, you should never lower the bar, like the, at the all. bar so like, low. But should. that's what I'm saying. I feel, I feel like, and and this is a great conversation to give him the light and the respect that he deserves. I'm not trying to take anything away from him, yeah. but I'm also trying to maintain my integrity on what I believe a great R and B artist to be. Yeah. And I'm not saying he's not great at what it is that he does, he but is. what a great R and B artist is is a total package. There's... If you can't dance, and it's only a few outliers and niggas that can't dance that I want to hear sing, like I, I can't I can't keep forcing these conversations personally. Yeah. And I, and I, yeah, obviously I, we did what we were supposed he, to do. He got a dance. The nigga got a dance. Yeah, bro. Like, are, bro. Y'all, are, y'all, are, y'all, are y'all hearing his toes shift? I'm tired. No, but it ain't, a, it ain't about that. This just feels the like a passion thing. project mm-hmm. or like a hobby that yeah. he did because he could yeah. do it and got the talent. But like Chris Brown said. It's the era of ugly R and B niggas. He said yeah. that niggas. Yes, I agree. He said R and B ain't there. Y'all niggas is ugly. 
Wait, he, he meant, <laughs> oh shit, I thought he meant like ugly crying, like crying no, to your no, joint no, no. back. Like, oh, no. my girl back. We I need like a heartthrob. We okay. need a new artist that's going to make you jealous when your girl's like, oh my God. And you're just like, nah, fuck that nigga. Like, we need yeah. that. He needs to be desirable. He needs to be a powerhouse. I'm tired of the crooning. Like, I even hate when people call Drake a singer, and I love Drake so much. Yeah. But it's like, let's stop doing that. Can hold Usher is a singer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Drake is a crooner, and we... you have to put technology on that shit. Even Bryson Tiller. <laughs> even Bryson. Mm -hmm. he... But I love him. It, me too. He makes great so, music. Yeah. I think but he, he makes... made an impact to the culture to the point that it's like, ah, I feel like you're He shifted. He exactly. yeah. 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 created like, a whole like, subgenre of R&B. Yeah. Which is dope, but it also kind of open the door for niggas who don't do what Bryson does as well to do it. Yeah. And, and it's lowered the standard and that's where we're at. even yeah. more. Mm -hmm. So now it's open the floodgates for all these niggas to be like, oh shit, Bryson is not the best singer, but he's making dope R&B music. I could just get in the booth and just do whatever, throw some auto tune on it. It's like, nah, bro. Like I, You can't do it like Bryson. Like he's writing his shit. Yeah. Too. Like <laughs> I believe that Lucky Day is the closest that we have to that yeah. traditional R&B superstar. Yeah. But I don't it's think... It's not enough for me. I don't, no, it, it, no, it's, it's not enough. It's, it's not, not enough. enough. He's not enough yeah. for me. It's not enough. Yeah. I think he's just the closest. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's the I closest to that. it, but I yeah. don't think it hasn't crossed. You know who gonna take it? Who? Wanye's sons. They're good. Wanye's I met them at my sons, job. they gonna mm -hmm. save R&B. They're really good. They, they sound save just like they dad. They gonna save R&B. About four of them, too. One of them gonna have puberty and be the heartthrob and they, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Well, sort of like like how eras have changed, I, I do think the kids find some of that dancing shit to be corny. And, and it's like, if these are the new fans that they have to curate to and, and create for, mm -hmm. I, nah, cause one, they one, love Chris one, Brown I was still. gonna say women are never gonna not want a nigga that could dance. Like I mm. love so a if, dancing funny nigga. Are you dumb? Anomalies. If you're making music <laughs> to impress Maybe other men when you're singing, then you ain't doing R and B right. Mm -hmm. nah, because an sure. R and B artist goes into the booth to make sure the ladies are satisfied. Yes. However, they come out. I hear what you're saying. Just hear my point, right? If we're gonna give Bryson Tiller the credit for creating the subgenre, mm -hmm. which then created more artists from that vein. Bryson Tiller wasn't dancing. There's a new fan base, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> that likes what they like from Bryson Tiller. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with dancing. For sure. yeah, yeah. It has more to do with vibes, curation. Not just vibes, how you place, his, yeah. his songwriting. Like, yeah, for you sure. haven't heard Absolutely. an RB artist write with such conviction like that since yeah. R. Kelly. I'm not even gonna lie to you. No, that I might know be you, a hot he's take. nasty, but it's true. Yeah. No, like yeah. Bryson sings with such conviction. You like, damn, yo, like I might really go stalk that bitch right now. Like, yo, <laughs> tell him don't come back, you mind. Like yeah. Yeah. Bryson just does it for me personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know he means every every note. every word. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know toxicity is, is taking over. That's music. like with Brent. It yeah. works for Brent Fires. He's not the best singer. He's yeah. not a powerhouse vocalist. No, he's but not. the, yeah, the songwriting. Yo, what? Excuse me. Hey? What you say? You don't you like that? Yeah, you good? I don't like him either. I'm saying we, we disagree already for the first time. That's the first. I've been debating. I've been debating him. I don't really care about him too. That's okay. I'm, a lot I'm, of people I'm, don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm not yeah. mad. I get it. I get it. Because he see, Savon is a fan of the Joes. The the Neo yes. Mario the Mario yeah. Chris Brown, you and know me, what I'm as well. me as well me as well but yeah, I will too. say I, I I grant some leniency for the newer acts because no, yeah. they don't come from that era yeah. but the bar was so high like I'm yeah. not gonna lie to you Wasn't you the, know yeah. you know what was a visual representation of that shit mm -hmm. the verses between Mario and Amario yeah. absolutely. Mario Absolutely. basically went there on a vengeance, like, oh, y'all niggas push me out for this shit? Yeah. I right, watch. Yeah. And <laughs> fucking embarrassed the fuck fact. out of Amorion, which goes to show, like, a real singer is never going to go out of style. Absolutely. But you, we could agree that the bar for rap is lowered as well, right? Oh, they're, not, they're not doing third verses. So that's, that's my whole point, yeah, where it's no. like, as we continue to grow from era to era, I don't know if that's going to still be the... It's our job our... to it's it's our job yeah. to hold the standard as the experts and you know the media people. That's yeah. our job because if we keep on lowering it to yeah. with the public, yeah. like they don't know what's going on. They don't understand the music business that's impacting right. music too. They yeah. don't understand. So right. we have to speak on it. Our mind got to write on the artist. You yeah. got to talk about the artist. You feel yeah. me? I got to create the content for the artist. Like we cannot do what the public is doing because they don't know better. Yeah. So we have to write off subgenres. I, I, not I, I have no horse in, no no, in this race. Not necessarily. I'm just trying to get us to think outside the box a little Not necessarily, but like, I get what Savon is saying. Like, mm -hmm. I see a lot of people praising the Leon Thomas project, and I think it was well, and I, I think it was a good project, and I think he is super talented, but 
Will I be talking about it again later? Yeah, Probably it, not. It's, it's it, it doesn't make me feel the way eighty seven oh one made me feel. <laughs> you feel me? Or and we were young or as fucking shit. Year of the Gentleman made me feel. How we feel? So when do you guys Chris think y'all are going? Yeah, thank you. When do y'all when do y'all think y'all gonna get that back? I, I, I don't. I, 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 don't, I, I don't think it's coming come back. Age. I don't. <laughs> like, come on. I, I don't think it's coming when, back. No, Eris. Thank you, Ti and Tiny's daughter. They're going to use like that her. settlement money to develop her. They're, they're going to save And salute to that R&D. black family. Yep. $70 million. Dollars. Okay. Eris and the Juan, Juan Moore. Mm. They coming. Armand, you said you don't think it's coming back. I don't. I, I just don't see anyone. Like, I, and l- 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 let me not generalize. Like, there sure. are a lot of R&B acts who do care that much. Like, uh, Kenyon Dixon. He is incredible. Yes, I, he I love he's great. Kenyon Dixon. He's post, he, he posted videos of him doing dance routines. Mm-hmm. He's he's out here covering everybody's songs. He's he's touring, like, releasing EPs and, like, 90s version of his EPs and 80s versions of it. Like, he he loves music, and he's, he's doing all types of different shit. Yeah. But just unfortunately, we, or the, the, the labels... The culture, the media, we don't elevate the most talented people. We yeah. we elevate the most popular, popular. Yep. the shit that's going to get us the most clicks and the most traction. Mm-hmm. And so as much as we, we can do everything we can to uplift the most talented people, but also consumers have so much individualism and autonomy now, right. they don't have to listen to us. They can just go listen to whatever the fuck they want and pump whatever they want. And these playlists are going to put out the shit that's going to get them the most traction too. So it's right. like... I, as as much as we may try, mm-hmm. it, it it may not be uh, effectual. Like I yeah. believe it. It also starts with the artist, right? Like if you are a singer or whatever R and B artist, you aspire to be that, and your reference point to music is a Chris Brown. Mm-hmm. It's going to shape how you are, or a Bryson Tiller is going to shape how you create your music. Yeah. And there's no knock to Bryson or Chris Brown, but if you ask Chris Brown where his roots come from, he's going to tell you Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. He's going to tell you New Edition. He's going to tell you the foundation of what the essence is of R&B music, Mm -hmm. what R&B slash a pop star is. You get what I'm saying? So I think going back, like we have these conversations on the pod all the time Mm -hmm. about prerequisites in music, Mm -hmm. right? You don't need them. All you need is a microphone, a beat, an engineer, and and you go. But I think R&B, you need to go back to Stevie Wonder. Yeah. You yes. need to be able to reference a Luther, Luther Vandross. It doesn't mean you have to make music like them, yeah. but you need to see you what a it. full package is yeah. from vocal ability to background vocals to the song structure mm-hmm. to knowing how to make a bridge. Like You just need to have that history of music yeah. to create that type of star. I don't believe that it's gone forever because yeah. I believe history will repeat itself at mm-hmm. some point. Like yeah. We'll get one of them ones who stick out. But today, I think the problem is the dudes who, who, who appear or want to have sex appeal they lean too heavy in the being too sexy. Mm-hmm. Like, like now, like nigga, you turn it me away. Like right. who? Like we mean? talked about an album cover, the Lloyd oh. album cover. <laughs> oh. You know what I'm saying? That was and the I'm one time he did that one, though. I, but there's a lot of new who who's the dude my sister loves? It's it's <laughs> Brian. No, Cole. No, he 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 was um <laughs> He um, makes the weird faces when he sings, light skinned looking dude. Oh, oh Trevor, Trevor Jackson? Jackson? Trevor Jackson. Trevor Jackson. <laughs> He's one, right? And okay. like it is certain artists who just try to be a little too sexy. That's it's my like, point. Well, he's now not he's... trying. <laughs> Yo, you good? Yo, Abby. Yo, Abby. No, I'm just saying, Trevor Jackson not trying to be sexy. You don't think no. Oh, he just is. Oh, that's just that's, that's just, just his thing. Yeah, bitches love Trevor. I know they do. I'm not saying. Yeah. All right. um, no, I see like, what you're saying. It's just happening because of just him being desirable, but I don't think he's like trying to so, do that. So, so, so if I'm a, like, so I'm, if I'm an artist, right? Uh-huh. You know who's trying to do a safari. Right. Yeah. If I'm an artist, right, and let's just say I have all the prerequisites. Mm. I'm a musician. I, I know how to do a bridge. I know how to perform back. You Leon the, Thomas. I'm Leon Thomas. Mm. But yeah, I'm seeing. Oh shit! <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's tough. That's you, tough. You're but done. I'm just seeing what's working and who's selling. Because that's another part of this shit we we fail to mention. It's unfortunate. This shit is still a business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if I'm seeing cats like. Brent Fayaz, Tommy Richmond, who we about to get to in a second. Fayaz. Brent Fayaz. <laughs> I didn't know that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, Brent Fayaz. Uh-uh. Yeah, it's my dog right there. <laughs> if I'm seeing that's what's taking off, and the kids might see a nigga that's crying for his girl on the floor, like back in the 90s, and like that shit was ill to me as a kid. Absolutely. I bro. loved all of that 
Yo, boom bots out your window. I miss my that. joint. I'm Yo, trying to get her back. In Ray cool. J one wish video. If I That's had exactly one wish. wish. Like, we come from that and that will never lead me. I'm just saying for the next generation who is creating the next batch of music, if I'm seeing that the fans and the kids think that's corny, I'm not doing that. Which I'm sucks. not doing it. People, Which sucks. people it write sucks. the kids off. Y'all mm -hmm. say stuff like that with no data or no, proof. No, 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 no. They be there because no. it, there's a reason why. Hey, they love be Brent because he kind of leans. He's like the rapper R and B. They singer. have no other option. Nothing they got else options. is being given to them. They, we just named no, them. But let's be for real. Uh -huh. Let's be for real. Just because niggas be is real. talented don't mean they lit. Like you could be corny Absolutely, and talented, yeah. and, that's, the and that's the case. And and we say the same thing. You could be the reverse too. Yeah. So it's like I don't think that's the case. Like I feel like we need to give the kids a chance. And we need okay. to teach them and tell them because my cousin had to put me on to like, you Facts. know, what good music is and stuff. So who is doing that for them? They're all on the streaming platforms getting like, you know, their music um, tastes from algorithms. Like, do they have older siblings or cousins or aunties or uncles that's like, nah, look, listen to this. Like, they do. I do that. Not all, not everyone. That's a privilege. Some of the, It is a privilege. But what I will say is, though it may be a privilege, how many people do you actually like see like in, in terms of the kids right because like you let's say you you know kids 18 yeah to like 21 right yeah they think i'm their age <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> what are they listening to right now in terms of r&b summer walker mm -hmm. we love some uh, uh, women is held, holding it down the ladies uh, across the board Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Like mariah the scientist mariah, 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 scientist. mariah the scientist well, is, um, is it from a Mappiano. school of like brent fayaz mm -hmm. no yeah, yeah but and i'm not mad at that i think yeah, you know the, the women I, I like all of them they deserve that yeah. you know what i'm saying but i feel like if like a coco jones was paired with like a John Tay Austin or mm -hmm. even like a Candy Burris or like a, a Troy Taylor and like crafted a sound that was unique for her and like a song that's just like super dope and arranged well, yeah, yeah. I think that she would be received. I See, Ab, I was a I was an old soul as a kid. Yeah. One of them dudes. Like I listened to the Temptations. I listened okay. to old African music. I listened to seventies music. Should I even listen to Nirvana at times, right? Okay. But I still bump, you know, spin a drill, nigga. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's balanced. Right. <laughs> My thing is, over the years, I've realized that I'm one of the anomalies. I think we're also one of the anomalies here because we like to search and do both. Yeah. I'm seeing the kids with all the music in their hands in the world. See, when we was coming up, we had to go to Fye. Mm -hmm. We had to go cop physicals. Throwback. I'm seeing them have all the the opportunity to download whatever they want to hear from every era, and they don't do it. And they don't do it. Yeah. That's our <laughs> fault, though, mm -hmm. because I was only interested in that shit because yeah. VH1 was putting out I Heart the '80s, I Heart the '90s, and now I'm finding out things that I feel like is dope, and I'm just like, oh shit, or I'm discovering what a sample is, mm -hmm. like you know, like you said that Chris Brown, his reference is Michael Jackson and New Edition and stuff like even with the rappers like their their references are like jazz musicians and shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like the sampling mm -hmm. was different, the references were different and I just had a natural curiosity to just go and discover and like kids don't have that anymore and I think that that is all intentional yeah. cuz also at that time, you know, black artists just had more independence and more control over the art as well I really? think compared to time? now. Yeah, because they didn't even believe in hip hop and didn't want to fund it. Nobody signed Hove. He had to sign himself. Like, no one believed in it. And now that it became like such a popular thing, like the corporations put their claws in it and shit, they're trying to tell us what to do. And, oh, this is what is best. Or, like, this is what the person who's cutting the check wants. But it's like, no, we need to regain control mm -hmm. of that shit, yeah. which we see happening. Because it's going to happen anyway with all the downsides and then layoffs yeah, and shit. We ain't got no choice. <laughs> we don't got no choice. So, like, this, the lane is wide open right now. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that they're not going to fuck with it. It's just that a lot of the shit that does have, like, the things that we say, like the Leon Thomas stuff, it's just not cool enough. Yeah. I'll bring it to rap real quick. We just heard Savon talk about how he feels about Playboy Cardi. Mm -hmm. And we know how the kids play feel about Playboy Cardi. They love, love him. him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't I, get it. I think there's more kids listening to Cardi than Eminem and them not I and they don't do, and they don't like do both that. at the same time. Yeah, I mean I'm just talking about lyricists, right? People that like ball work. Do they don't like I don't think they feel the need to go back and dig in the crates. That's like, my point. They, I don't think it's a one person that's no. guiding them. Yeah, there's there's just not that curiosity. It's like there's stuff that I like that's 
exists now and it's new why am i gonna go, go listen to some old nigga like <laughs> like that's i think that's just really how they feel and i get it i get it like i i, I wasn't that way when i was young like when Me i was either. young i love biggie I, I love ti like even as i'm 29 now i, I like some of these young niggas, different. but i have i love the artists i grew up with and artists that were before me but that was just the era that we grew up in like it was just very very different times i'd be in a car playing jodeci for my little cousin that nigga don't blink yeah it's sad, nah, man. but I do, I do love that they love Keisha Cole's um, love. Yeah, 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 I'm like, what y'all yeah. know about that? That gave me hope, and that's okay. what I'm saying. I'm if it's packaged certain dope songs, enough, no, niggas just songs, be corny. Hey. If it's packaged good enough and mm. it's just a good product, it's going to be received well. Because they yeah. love When I See You, they love Love by Keisha Cole, mm. and we know like those are timeless classics. Mm. It's right. just... Those songs are just that good. Yeah. Like and you're not gonna deny a good product undeniable. regardless of That's how old you are. I'm sorry. And like when it's sampled too, when it's sampled correctly, yeah. exactly. They kind of want to do the deep dive. Like, oh, where's this come from? Exactly. Well, sometimes because even the artists don't be doing a deep dive. Because Lotto disappointed me when she said she didn't know she was sampling Mariah Carey. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? That was kind of. I was crazy. like, come on, babe, <laughs> yeah, I love you. Come on, <laughs> catch up. Oh, but I crazy. gave her some grace. But like mm. the disrespect and Biggie and Pac that Lil Yachty and them used to do. That's crazy. Like yeah. we should have. We should have fucking tried to nip that shit in the bud then. But I think it's it's a clear case of seeing how predatory the music industry is because yeah. they only care about funneling and pumping out money and not really educating the artists that yeah. they are developing. Exactly. Yeah. Like we don't see artist development anymore. At yeah. all. Right. And I think that's where we need it the most mm -hmm. is in that particular lane of R and B. The male R and B artist doesn't get developed anymore. Nope. If you don't like a Leon Thomas is person, mm. you don't need to develop that he comes ready-made he yeah. just needs a budget and an opportunity to create his passion project on a larger scale yep. right like there is no artist development i think the the ladies they have a lot more support mm -hmm. and it takes a lot more to kind of pour into them mm -hmm. in this moment of time and it's working the summer walkers the scissors um the coco jones all of the women that are at the forefront of music today they're being developed still in some capacity. Whereas the male artists, the male R&B artists, they just out here like, all right, nigga, can you sing? Cool. Can you play an instrument? All right, cool. Do you have a little bit of Instagram following? Can you write a song? <laughs> right? Like nobody's taking them and saying, you know what? I'm going to develop you into the artist that of a, of a Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. right? right? Like it's just not happening. Because it's hard to turn someone into a musician. Like yeah. a lot of these kids, shout out to... um. Jermaine Dupri. I just seen mm -hmm. him uh, post on Instagram. He was on IG Live uh, earlier, and he was speaking to why he feels like, I don't know if he said R&B is dying or why R&B is changing. Mm -hmm. It's because, yo, a lot of these kids are not growing up in church. It's mm -hmm. true. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. everything you spoke to are musicians who come from musicianship. Wow. Right? So, when it's time for me to get in the booth and create an album for the world, yeah, it's going to really capture you because I'm pulling, like, Different from here, keys. here, and there. Right? Yeah. A lot of these cats now, they're not music, and that's okay because not everyone's a musician, mm -hmm. but they just people that could sing. And like, I think that's the real can't even like do the that. popularity Bro. dies faster than the actual gift. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. it's funny you mentioned church. Yeah. Um I learned when I learned guitar and like transposing and all that stuff, I fell in love with music even more because mm -hmm. I, I heard it differently. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So imagine not having that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And don't forget about autotone. Can't forget the about most the tunes. But tune been a while for a while. It's been but, around for a while. But that started that shit. Once rappers started singing their own hooks, mm -hmm. like they need the R and B. T Pain, touch it. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> like rappers started singing their own hooks. And yeah, R and B artists today, male R and B artists today, don't even sound good with rappers on songs. They don't. Yeah, I mean, and the, they don't even do it often. I don't like, think. I, like, yeah, yeah, most, I need more most of these they niggas don't. don't get called. Like er, everyone calls Ty Dolla Sign, or, or they call. <laughs> I ain't mad at that. Yeah, I mean, no, it's fine. But it's just like a lot of these other niggas mm -hmm. don't even get the opportunity because like niggas don't want them. Like, like I'm thinking about the names that were thrown out after the Usher tribute, like the Josh Levi's, the Vito's. Mm -hmm. You know, that goes just goes back to the original points that we all made earlier. Like, yeah, they can sing their asses off but you know you need the package mm -hmm. like Tavon yeah. said and yeah. a part of that package includes desirability if a woman does not want to fuck you and a nigga do not want to be like you you are not going hey, to be a star I hear you but them niggas want to be like Brent Fayez exactly. and them mm -hmm. girls want him exactly. and he's not yeah. a musician yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, like it's split. The, the songwriting, you know? songwriting yeah. sure. counts for something. Sure. And he has sure. this, he has this cool factor to him. It doesn't feel like he's trying. Right, he don't, be anything. Mm-hmm. like he got swag. He's just and, 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 and that's kind of where R and B is going now, right? Yeah. Like they're seeing like, yo, the rappers look a little cool. Mm-hmm. Let me do that shit. And then the dudes now, the kids, they're like, you know, what? I kind of like this style of R and B. Yeah, and the, that package that we appreciate, we love. They don't appreciate it as much. It was different when New Edition did it, though. It's like they just not doing it right. Different era. He's not doing. You know it right. the kids now. Oh, that's corny, nigga, corny. <laughs> now, nah, but they loved hip hop. No. You could tell that they were R and B singers that just loved hip hop, right. and they mm-hmm. try to infuse it. And like when it's when they try to do it now, it just yeah. don't hit the same. Hey, is there anything else we want to get to last before we thing, get about it? Last here? thing, we're out of here. Uh, Tommy Richmond was competing with Leon Thomas for number mm-hmm. one R and B album this week. Tragedy, mm-hmm. tragedy. Um, Leon Thomas ended up edging him out, right, Armand? Uh, I think he edged them out for the number one. That album. was just dropped Friday, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So the, the official numbers aren't out. Okay, yet. official numbers coming out, so yeah. we'll know soon. Uh, I think something that was really cool for Tommy Richmond's album, he did not include Million Dollar Baby. He yeah. should have. Yo, Ab, you good? Great. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you don't think that was brave of him to do? Very brave. The bravest. That's why he should have did it. <sighs> Cause that shit sound like Brent called him and was like, "Yo, give me a concept of a plan." Yes, yes. Like that shit sound like Brent lost his mojo. That sounded like Brent's whole team. Yeah, and they just sound like Brent just without the swag. That's that cool factor though that they be trying to get off, right? Like, yo, fuck what the industry has done before. We gonna do some shit because I'm so confident in what I'm. But that's some out. DMV shit too. So mm. I don't want. I know my New York bias be jumping out a lot. Mm, so I don't right. want to disrespect they like wave and culture and shit just because I sure. don't know what. I'm and I'm not mad at it because. Tommy Richmond came up under Brent, so of course there's going to be yeah. some, some influence there. But I, exactly. I, I think this hearing a full album from him helped to separate him from being just a Brent clone. Like this is very Absolutely. like electronic and like some house music funky on there, funk, and, yeah, like rock. Elements Sound like some black music it, was like, on there for a second, no, like no. different. And I, <laughs> no, the vibes he tried yeah. to get into. Oh, oh. She, she, she was like, nah. Nah. she was like, nah. 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 she tried it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it sounded like Brent said, "Yo, give me a concept of a plan," and Brent finished it on another project. Yeah. Wow. Um, but I, I, I liked a good amount of the songs on there. I, I wouldn't say I love the album, but right. for me, it's just. Hearing different type of music in this era where a lot of the rappers sound the same, a lot of the R&B singers either don't sing mm. well or sound the same. Like, just hearing something different, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Okay, and then actually getting into the album, like, yep. I, I saved a good amount of it. I'm trying to pull it up right now. I love now. when he talks about the specific tracks. He's like, I'm like, go ahead. Uh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I don't even stop. He's like, me. So, like, this shit is dirt. So, <laughs> I really liked Whitney, Whisper in My Ear. The intro, I liked a lot, too. Give it all. I yeah. like the intro. Really? You really got one time to be offbeat before I get mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thought You Were The One was probably my favorite song. I like that uh, one. Green Therapy was really good. Like, there was, there, yeah. there, was, there was some good shit on here. I I get why he kept the singles off of it. Me because, too. Because, like, I think Million Dollar Baby was a good, like, introductory type song. Mm-hmm. Even though he's been making music for a while, the way that one popped off, like, people fucking with that, it's like, all right, whatever he puts out next, we're going to fuck, we're, we're going to at least give it a chance. Devil yeah. Is A Lie it actually probably would have fit on this album. Yeah. yeah both sonically, yeah. yeah. Sonically, yeah. it would have fit, but it kind of was a bit more like left of center, but mm-hmm. it was still good. I really liked it. Mm-hmm. And then this album, he just took it in a completely different, different direction. direction. So I was like, okay, cool. Like sonically, it wouldn't have worked out. So I appreciate that you cared more about the sequencing and the arrangement of the album yeah. rather than just boosting the numbers with your song that was almost number one. So exactly. I, I, I definitely salute him for that. Yeah. I, li- I, I listened, like the approach. I listened to it once through. Yeah. Not for me. You're not going to do it again? Never again. Mm. <laughs> Honestly, I, 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 I only did it because I was on the pre-pro doc. But and see, this, what this, I will say. But see, this is what confused me about the two of y'all. Nah, finish first, Avon. Finish first. Oh, is, 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 I'm about to get you. Nah. I, I'm, no. oh, you said finish fuck first, me finish, for. Finish, <laughs> <laughs> finish first. Finish first. Million Dollar Baby mm-hmm. is, to me, was mm-hmm. his White Iverson. Okay. Mm-hmm. His album sound like. As soon as I get away from y'all niggas, <laughs> I'm gonna show you. It gave for me when I listened to it. But it was some funk on it. It wasn't any. It wasn't really nah. giving the million dollar baby vibe through and through. It of course it had yeah. its moments, but I'm gonna keep my eye on this. But that's kind of just not. how artists be rolling I ain't shit my out. Ear. Like, <laughs> like if, mm-hmm. if if you listen to the album and then you like million dollar baby would have been the safest sounding song on that album, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, and and with singles. Artists go safe. Like you want to go with the most commercially palatable thing yeah. that everyone's gonna fuck with. And we saw Million Dollar Baby had a huge moment this year. So like 
I, I understand it from his standpoint. I, I don't think that he like the album was like a fuck you to that type of music. Like right. I think just yeah. due to the person he came up under and yeah. like the area he's from, I, I I think he has some type of affinity for hip hop. Will he completely leave it? That that, that remains to be seen. Wait, that's hip hop. What, nah, the, I'm what, not calling that hip hop. I'm calling that alternative music. No, no, I was I was talking about Million Dollar Baby. Like oh, that's gotcha. oh, oh, that's gotcha. more rooted yeah, in hip hop gotcha. type stuff. But like this album was very much so. I, I can do other things, and like, that's I why I'm show afraid. That. That's why I'm, he, he could definitely pivot. This yeah. sounds like an alternative album. Just pivot, babe. But I will say this, y'all. Y'all told y'all spoke to me all episode about the packaging and live instrumentation and musicianship. Some of that was on there. Absolutely. And and if we if we gonna be mad at the kids, the new kids for only being like a replica of a Brent Fayaz or being a replica of all these other people, I think we should give that sound a chance because it's out of the box. He ugly. I bet. I bet. <laughs> nah, that's valid. All right, so that's valid. All right, that's all she had to say. Hey y'all, this has been a neat wait, time. Wait, wait. What, what, do you, what do you think of Daniel Caesar? But ugly. Dan Damn. What, what, but he, he could sing though. Yeah, that, that he could. Nice. But when he said cancel me, that's why everybody said, all right, bye. Yeah, it, was, <laughs> I, nigga. it was it was <laughs> so easy to cancel that. Nigga. Say and it's desirability, cause oh. they've been trying they about to put out another doc for Chris Brown. Just know Damn. that's about to be World War on, <laughs> on the I can't wait to see the, the discussion about that. I yeah. did see that. Yeah, wait, cause, crazy, cause the people who was like, Oh, he only did one thing when he was fifteen and you know, the, oh, just know the timeline is gonna be divided and it's because girls still wanna fuck Chris Brown. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. One question for you guys. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have playlists? Of course. Yeah. For yeah. our listeners, you want to just mention where, where they can find it? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just Anywhere. search my name on Apple Music or Spotify, mm -hmm. uh, Armand Sadler. Uh, follow me and uh, you can access my playlist there. I don't want y'all to see mine. <laughs> I, I started making a playlist of like every song I've ever loved from the beginning of like my memory, and mm. now I'm embarrassed and don't want nobody to see it. Give me like two songs off that playlist. Yeah. Um, Give me two songs off that playlist. There's a lot of teeny boppers. Give me two problem. songs off problem? the playlist. Right. She running. She I got running. like Paula Deanda, Tanisha <laughs> Kelly on there. <laughs> oh, oh, Tanisha yeah, Kelly like, on there. Yeah, Tanisha Say Kelly. Word. I even got Take some like back. old school painted oh, band shit on there. Like it's, it's like really oh, yeah. about me. But we got that slide deck. I stay mm. busy, slide that. Yeah. So you can definitely yeah. check that out anywhere you listen to music. Yeah, because y'all was Thanks. rifling off names I ain't never heard before. I'm like, nah, I was trying to catch it. Like, whoa, whoa slow down. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I'm sure probably did the same thing. No, it's like my, a lot of MySpace music. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Real quick. Shout out to that era. Before yeah. we get out of here, Alex, I know you wanted to talk about, we, we got oh, nice two Bs in the building. Yeah. We got to talk about Queen B. Oh, man. And All you right. could just, real quick, I just wanted to know your thoughts on that. My, it, what you want to talk about, Yonce, for a beehive? First of all, I want y'all to know. Beehive. First, I'm beehive. It wasn't me. First, I'm beehive first. Uh -huh. Usually I, when people say that, they about to say something. It's about to go left. Opposite <laughs> shit. Oh, I want y'all to know that I'm beehive first, right? But, but I think she should have never pivoted to country music. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think it's a passion project of hers? Because she's from Texas, and I'm sure she had a lot of upbringing around that music sure i understand it but for her to completely pivot the way she has in the last mm -hmm. few years see let me run off some stats real quick beyonce's country's uh country album uh that was my notes i said beyonce's country album came and went that would sound shady oh that was Damn, you that's crazy anyway yeah, you basically just said it <laughs> zero cma no nominations mm -hmm. she went 0 for 17 at the people's choice country awards and if she would have put out Anything in the vein of what we liked, R&B, mm -hmm. uh, soul, she wouldn't have seen any of these problems. She would have been heralded, she would have been heralded and respected. Mm -hmm. For her to not receive one award, 16 carriages, find a way. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I'm Beehive, I'm with all that mm -hmm. shit. And there was some music on that album that I enjoyed. Yeah, she I was kind of surprised yeah. when the album came and went. Yeah, it was shocking. Do you shocking. not remember? Well, there's a couple of reasons why it came and went. One, the CMAs don't fuck with Beyonce, and they mm -hmm. said that shit to her face. Yeah, years ago. So that's one. Two, the Kendrick and Drake beef literally happened right after that Popped shit, and no one gave a fuck about nothing yeah. else that Beyonce, happened after. But, but, but that, that was Beyonce. like- But Beyonce, y'all? No. That Drake <laughs> and Kendrick beef, beef was bigger than Beyonce at that point. Okay. Um and three, um, if she gave a fuck about streaming them, but she would have put Lemonade on Spotify. Like, she don't care. She's a mom of three mm -hmm. doing shit to impress her children, and- Doing shit that she wants to do because she could do it. And I love like the results that came out of the country album, like Shabuzi. Um Salute to him. he's yeah. sitting on the top of the charts. Fire. Um Tanner yeah. Adele. I didn't even know who the fuck she was before. Right. 
You feel me? Like, <laughs> there's a lot going on. So, yeah, shout out to B, because that's all for her. Like, she don't give a fuck. Uh, I'm right. sure she knew I, they were going to snub her. I think she give a fuck, though. They give a fuck. They give that's a fuck. That's why they talk about the that's why Grammys every year. Her and Hov's, like, Hov's speech at the Grammys, followed by Beyonce, the Super Bowl commercial. And I the, forgot the, about the that. The record's dropping right after. Yeah. Her whole caption about, oh, this has been in, in the works for four years. And, like, I had that situation at the sea. Like, to me, I felt a little secondhand embarrassment because this felt like Grammy bait, Grammy pandering. Like they don't, they want to give me album of the year for self title. They want to give me album of the year for lemonade. I'm gonna give these niggas the type of music that they like, and now they're gonna have to recognize me, right? And I still don't think she's gonna get album of the year at the upcoming Grammy. So it it, it felt a little embarrassing for me, and seeing the diminishing returns on it. The fact, she's not putting videos out too. It's just like mm-hmm. you're just putting this shit. Like Beyonce is was obviously one of the most recognizable music figures ever. So like she don't necessarily need to need to promote it. She'll drop stuff and the behind have a work for her but with this endeavor like the minimal effort that she put in and then the timing of it all really fucked fucked with her too but it was it was it was a little embarrassing for me to see like yeah yeah i really care about the grammys this much right it's it's been a minute since in my opinion that she's just put things out and then it's like oh the beehive is gonna do what they had to do like her clothing line flopped what darion the Ivy, Ivy Park. Polk. Ivy Park. <laughs> that too. Yo, what's wrong with you? Now <laughs> <It's both? laughs> the baddies had that on back in the day. That is no. definitely one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was shaking it. Hello. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I was just curious to yeah. see what you had to yeah, say no, about that. I mean, it's, it's, I, it's imagine, tough to see. Imagine what an R&B album from Beyonce would do right She doesn't like Beyonce R&B anymore. Beyonce knows that. She don't know. do it no more. But let's do it. What was because, the last r album? And I was about to get to that. When she announced that... Was lemonade? Uh, lemonade. Nah, well, shit, shit, shit. Lemonade. Lemonade. On lemonade. There. Right. I'll give it was lemonade. A, it was a, I think lemonade. I think lemonade was considered soul R and B. I feel I like I feel like okay. from like yeah. self titled onward, like Beyonce's a pop star to me. Like she, like, 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 pop. like like she's yeah. rooted in soul and R and B, but she's a pop star. And, Since and, like, and and her albums will always be like mostly pop type stuff. Obviously, Renaissance is house and um, yeah. the last year, Cowboy Carter was country music. But I think mm-hmm. if she were to ever just like go back to not making like thematic or like one genre focus, it, it would be a pop album where you get a ballad, but you get the upbeat shit. You get, you know, yeah. like all types of shit. Like she's just- a Chris Brown shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I also think she's just at a place where she's trying to like um, prove a point and just mm-hmm. shift the culture as well. Yeah. Like that famous interview when she's like, people don't make albums anymore. Like I think she's leading by example with this act one, act two, and like rumored act three. Mm-hmm. Like, like not to say that no one wants recognition for their work, but I think she was anticipating the snub. Like okay. they don't fuck with her and she knows that. Mm. I, I mean- I see where you're coming from, but see, this is why I wasn't as mad when Lil Wayne came out and was defending himself, because Mm -hmm. if the Carters are allowed to talk about the Grammys every single year in some obtuse way, bro. then he should have been allowed to say what he feels. Nigga, Hov did it on stage as he was accepting a Grammy, bro. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. This shit is crazy. and, And so it's like, you might be right. Like she might be expecting the snubs, but if you're expecting the snubs, yo, just do the just go to what works. And I'm hoping she's that Beyonce this trailer already. It ain't like she's, she's trying amazing. to accomplish anything. She's amazing. She's, That's why she don't got to prove nothing to me. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. She's just doing what she wants. But Beyonce, you don't got to prove nothing to me. You are her. You queen bee. You don't even got to go into another genre to feel like you got to appease all them other people. I will say this though. I'm praying and hoping that trilogy, that third act. Because R&B. It's R and B. It might be. It might be. She might hear this shit and, and yeah. like, you know what? I think Alex, it's coming. I'm gonna yeah. feed you. <laughs> yeah, twin. <laughs> Send it. <laughs> Yo, speaking of twins, yeah. how y'all did that? Huh? Uh, oh, say, say, uh, uh, accent. Uh, you trying to be like me? I, I am. And then with the little yellow, he knew I was coming. I, I, so I did. I did. He knew I was coming. He was like, "Let me wear yellow five. I mean, I, I really did. I ain't mad at that. <laughs> we did fly together, Air Maxes. Yeah. Hello. Or <laughs> stay busy, family. Yeah. Thank y'all for pulling up. Let the people know where they can find you, real quick, ladies first. Let's go. Go, Miss Two Bees. At M I S S number two B E E S everywhere. If you see me on Twitter, don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> if you can follow me at Armand Sather on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Follow us at Stay Busy Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Tap in with us every Wednesday, new episodes. And uh, yeah, love y'all. Thanks for having us. No, for sure. Thank y'all for pulling up. And Today like I fun. always say, if y'all made it this far in the episode, there's no reason that you aren't subscribing, <laughs> liking, Word. engaging, hey. whatever the case may be. This is a full episode. Please make sure y'all go follow the family also i do want to give uh, armand a special special shout out 
uh, because he has contributed to this podcast in ways yes. that are unfathomable. Yes. We can't even put it into yes. words. Literally. Um, you know, a lot of, of people in, in, in this space and just entertainment in general, they lead with their ego. Mm -hmm. They lead with their selfishness. Mm -hmm. They lead with um, what's in their best interest. Um, and at a very pivotal moment of our podcast, um, by, by chance, you know, Armand and I, we, we were just connecting and talking on some things. Um, and, you know, I got his blessing to allow, you know, some of the people that work on the back end to work with us on this pod that make this mm -hmm. podcast go Correct. and has brought it to new heights, new levels ever since that conversation. Um, in the moment, it was awkward. You know, for me, at least, it, it was an awkward time to be like, hey, man, so are we going to do this? Whatever the case may be. Yeah. And, you know, um, he he put everything to the side and said, look, bro, go do your thing. I, I support you in this way. And so I do want to salute to you and highlight that and say thank you, bro, because yeah. without that, I don't know if this podcast would be where it is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, those are the thankless things that happen that we know. Real talk. But, you know, the people out there, they just see us dap up. They see us turned up drinking tequila. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. They see the ball head. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Wait, you bald too? I'm bald, baby. Gang. Can I gang. I'm bald and beautiful. Can I see? Can you see how it's going to I said cease and desist. I'm I'm <laughs> yeah, I don't do all that yeah. shit, yeah. crazy. <laughs> but... <laughs> but I do want to thank you and give yeah. you your recognition for that because it's, real, it's, it's been a major part of what it is that that we've grown into on this podcast. And we highly appreciate you for the blessing, yeah, man. I want to see my told. people do great, and it's benefited us too. All the wisdom that that person has gained from working with y'all, he's brought it back to us. So mm -hmm. fire works yeah. out for everybody. So for little, sure. And with that being said, it's the Need to Know podcast, what you need to know, when you need to know. This week we had a who you need to know, and we will be back again next week. Peace, y'all. Gang.